coffee looks weird. Well, it's, there's not much milk, is there? Mm. Not very nice. It's fine. Yeah. It's definitely decaf. It's definitely decaf. Okay. I mean, you don't need full... It's not full bar. Yeah. Mine's full bar. Okay. We've started, by the way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tune in, it's Sunday morning Sit back, relax, we'll talk it through Through with the baddest and you Welcome to um, this official meet at Brew with the Bennets. There are two horses in the race today. Um, Scott Bennett, he has um, incredible form. Um, <laughs> a massive tail. <laughs> No, he needs to be led out to the paddock to be shot. I yeah. think that's it. He's had his best days behind him. He likes yeah. it firm underfoot. Yeah. He's um he's an old nag. <gasps> oh. oh he's glue, he's ready for glue, whereas Gemma, she prefers it moist. He's in the knacker's yard. <laughs> um he's got odds thirteen to two. Thirteen to two? I don't know odds. Do they <laughs> Hundred to one. Hundred to one. Is that yeah. bad? Yeah. Oh yeah, hundred to I one. I mean, then. I could make someone a lot of money. But yeah. the I mean that's like my comedy yeah. career. Yeah. I could make some a shitload of money, yeah. but the odds are I'm going to fall at the first fence, <laughs> at the first furlong, first, um, yeah. and then in paddock two. Is right. that where they run out of? Yeah, I, I think you're really stretching this um, metaphor now. Is, but go uh, on, Gemma Bennett. <laughs> she's in an horse called Gemma yeah. Bennett. She's a, a little whippersnapper. Th- Thirteen hands. <laughs> that's how they measure horses. Yeah, isn't hands. It? Yeah, she's got 13 hands. And that's just a German two friend. Two feet. <laughs> <laughs> 13 hands and one group. And they're off. And Scott's coming up at the rear. <laughs> Shut up. Never done that, even on our wedding day. <laughs> <laughs> and you're right, he's gone down at the first furlong. I've never done that either. <laughs> Oh, this is like a carry-on film. It's awful. It's awful. Awful. awful gutter. Well, anyway, welcome. Anyway, welcome yeah. to The Brew with the Bennets. Yeah, it's lovely. I'm Scott. This is Gemma. This is We're Married. Uh, this is the only time of the week we get to chat and to catch up. And here we are doing exactly just that. And now we've caught up. See you next week. <laughs> That's enough for now. Um, it's yeah. lovely. It's lovely. I'm looking out the window and it's pissing down. It's just awful. It's just one of those. It's, it's such, because we record this on a Monday. And it's, it really feels like a Monday, I was just doesn't say, it? It's such a Monday. Isn't it? If you were like two nanas yeah. talking. It's grim. You'd be like, it's such a Monday. It's that drizzly weird rain. It's horrible. It's horrible. There's no clouds in the sky. It's no, just, there's loads of clouds in the I sky. Mean, that's what I mean. There's too many clouds in the sky. Yeah, there's no clouds in the sky. <laughs> no, it's covered in clouds. Do you know what it's a day? It's a yeah. day to stay in your gym jams. Gym jam, gym jams. It's a day to stay. Well, we've already failed because I'm at my gym jams and I've been to work. It's a day to watch ITV3 reruns of Columbo. Mm, it's not on, I've checked. I loved a rainy day as a kid. We could watch re. We could watch uh, Glasto on the iPlayer. We'll come on to that later. Oh, we'll talk about that. Yeah. Um, but yeah it, so it's Monday the 27th of June. Yeah. But uh, this podcast will be reaching you on Sunday the 3rd of July. I'm glad you're on with these dates because I'm so confused. So, about. happy 3rd of July, everybody. Yeah. It's uh, Independence Day tomorrow. Is it? Fourth, oh, in America. 4th of July. Yeah, we don't give a shit, though, do we? Well, I'd like to celebrate it. In what way? I I demonstrate my independence. <laughs> What, just walking around the house no. saying, I don't need you. I don't need yeah, you. Yeah, I can do that on my own, thanks. I, do that. I mean, to be fair... I'll do you, that all day. You've been demonstrating your independence for yeah. 10 years now. And I go Weaponised re- incompetence. And do you know what else I also do? I yeah. sing, Oh, you ladies, independent, put your hands up at me. Oh, and I sing that all day. Independent, independent, <laughs> independent. I am independent. <laughs> uh, Next, at the post <coughs> office. Yeah. All the ladies make money, show Dragon. your hands up in... Uh, check out number four. <laughs> All the ladies make money. 
Can you stop singing? All the ladies making money. Is that a lyric? I think it is, isn't it? No. All the ladies making ladies. <laughs> all the ladies making ladies. Oh, we are bad with words, <sighs> aren't we? We are. Um, but yeah, oh, oh. so I do like to demonstrate my independence by mm. um, being independent on Independence Day. And it is the 3rd of July, which means it's three days till my dad's birthday. God, this calendar. You've got some brilliant... Not a rain so man on this, my mate. my dad was born in 1946. <laughs> Right, so he's a post post war boom baby. Yeah, um, boom boom shake yeah. shake the room. He's an absolute what? boomer. He's a boomer. He's an okay, absolute boom. boomer. That's such an insult now. Okay, apparently, boomer. yeah. Okay, boomer. okay, boomer. Um, but yeah, my dad was born in 1946, which is actually the year this house was built. Oh my god! So he's the same age as these bricks and mortar here. Yeah, um, dad's as old as my dad's house. got as many cracks as this house. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. no he's 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 looking good his pops he looking good look he's he's like a fine wine yeah he's like he has aged particularly well yeah he's father. doing all right his old father mm, um so he'll be uh 76 on the 6th of july well, happy birthday for that I your t- dad will be 75 <sighs> this year these dads are rocking on aren't they? they it feels like we've got dads who are and in then macca well, let's talk about that in a minute. Don't 80. blow that. I know. Oh, I was just going to say, saying. all these dads, old the Rolling Stones, yeah. and all this, like the Diana Ross and mm. the Paul McCartney, yeah. they are all leading the way. It's the year of the octogenarian. Do you reckon Diana Ross would go out with your dad? I don't know. I'll give her a ring. <laughs> <laughs> right, Diana. Do you reckon busy? your dad could pull Diana? Easy. Easy? Easy. How would he do it? I'll do your faces for you. <laughs> I'll give you a quote. I'll do your faces. You can get up on your roof, Diana. Diana, now, I know you're in the Supremes. Mm-hmm. You've been all over the world. You've got eight mansions. Yeah. Have you ever had a Calvary? <laughs> Imagine Diana at a Calvary. <laughs> yeah. In the middle of the night, you made me want it. <laughs> got my past him, suddenly put me on it. Na, 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 in the Yorkshire pudding. <laughs> I can't believe you give that line, Yorkshire pudding. Roast potatoes. Yeah. And he put me a gravy. <laughs> da, 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 da. Diana, Diana, yeah. what you need to do, right, love? Uh, when the back's turned, put the gravy in your pocket. Yeah, that's what that's you do. It, yeah. Fill them pockets up. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So, my gravy, love. <laughs> my gravy, love. We can't do this no, for the whole can't. pod. This is becoming our thing. But yeah, I reckon my dad could take Diana Ross on a date. To what well, your thing is though. That, that, I think I'd find her voice uh, annoying because she does really hard. I think that's just a stage thing, isn't it? No. She's I like, think that's really her. She's a bit Jackson, isn't she? Well, I think he emulated Diana because he was in, he, he loved Diana, didn't he? Wasn't there some connection, family? Didn't he? Oh, no. Was it Liz Taylor he asked to marry him? And yeah. she said no. Yeah, she was like, no, Michael, because you're weird. Yeah. You're weirder than me. Yeah. Which is saying something. I don't know. Hi. Hi, is this Roy? This is Diana. I'm outside the Toby Carvery now. Yeah. What time are you coming? I go, Diana, my bus is late. Yeah. You know, that sort of thing. Oh. Hi, Roy. Imagine that, introducing him oh. to the Hi. Band. Hi. Hi, Roy. We're going to Ponte Fract. Did you think, did, did um, you know the Bee Gees? Did he talk high in real life or no. did he just sing falsetto? He just sang falsetto. Ha! Um, <laughs> 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 he just went, ha! He gets really annoyed when they talk about that. He walks off a... He walked off an interview. With, he walked off an interview. Oh, no. he and then he goes really low, doesn't he? Have you got it out your sister? Sorry. He walked... I love singing like a BG. He walked out of an interview with Clive Anderson mm. because Clive Anderson implied that he had to squeeze his nutsack to hit those notes. <laughs> and he took... <laughs> and he was like... He was really pissed Really off. offended? Yeah, and it was like, he walked out, then Robin... No sense of humour then. Then Robin Gibb walked out. To is, is he the dead one? Yeah. And They're all dead, aren't they? Except Barra. Yeah, and except then Baza. Morris. Oh, Morris. Morris yeah. Morris was just sat there, left. Yeah, because has he got the sense of humour? Yeah, and then he was like, "Sorry, Clive." And then yeah, he was so like, he's the one with the sense of humour. And then, then he just sort of went, "See you." Like they were in the put. It was. Have you, watch it on YouTube. I'm going to watch that it's later. Really awkward. That's it's awful. Really, you could see that Clive. Because then at the end he went, "Thank you very much uh, to to my guests, those who stayed and those that left." <laughs> oh God! He really fucked up. Yeah, he fucked it. Uh, but yeah, it must be awful when you're interviewing yeah. someone and then they just go. What happened to Clive Anderson now? He's next? still about, mate. Yeah. Uh, but do you know, some of the most awkward interviews, though, have you seen the Meg Ryan and Parkinson one? Oh, God. I actually. But she's awkward. I isn't know, she? but also Parky, man. He, what? He, Did he go for the I kill? I think he doubled down. I think oh, he was no. like, I think it was like that moment where he was like, you don't like, you don't. Now, I'm going to try and do a Parkinson. I used to do quite a good Parkinson years ago. Now, 
He says it that you, you don't like it. That's, That's rubbish. nothing he says, like Parkinson. No, 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 it's, you know, it's, it sounds like he's pushing for shit out, doesn't it? Yeah. No, he said it that you don't like interviews. And Where uh, is he from? He's from Barnsley. Barnsley. He says, hey, you don't like interviews. And she says, no. He says, well, you don't like this one. Like little oh, things no. like that. He's like, Parky, Parky, come on. Yeah, he got Mardy. He got Mardy. He got Mardy. Parky got Mardy. Mardy, Mardy, boom. Stop being so Mardy, Parky. Yeah. So I was just in the kitchen making a coffee. Now? Yeah, now, looking through at the drizzle in the garden, watching our cat, Bob, murder a frog. Oh, God. He's doing it a lot. We were watching it. And oh, I just like, oh, dear. He's I feel ch- sad. chucked it in the air at oh, one point. Oh, no. I feel awful. And then he looked at me as if to go, do you who, want it? Who yeah. do we make an apology to? I think the... Border bom, frogs. Bom, 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 bom. <laughs> right, just Sorry. let me stop you there. Mur- let me stop you there. Murder. How many minutes are we into this podcast? About eight. And we've had eight musical <laughs> interludes. This has got to stop. No, it hasn't. I think we do more. Bom, 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 I've got this, bom, right? Bom, <laughs> bom, 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 Stop bom, murdering bom, all bom, your bom, children. Bom, no, what is it? We've murdered or is it? Bom, bom, bom. What was the words to the frog chorus? I can't remember. Da, 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 I've murdered da, da, your children. Da, Bob da, has murdered da, 15 da, da, frogs. Da, da. We you all in this stand together. They're dun, all dun. dead under the trampoline. Oh, God. It was awful. It's I know it's awful. nature. I know it's but nature. But it's hard to see. We've got Olivia off ill today. Yeah, she is. She's upstairs yeah. as we record this yeah. in her bedroom. She's yeah. not very well. Uh, but it did get me thinking, Gemma. Um, when you're off school ill, mm. it is a weird vibe, isn't it? It is a weird vibe because and you, it depends how ill you are. Yeah, because I think she's not like ill, like massively like yeah. luckily, puking, yeah. luckily. She's just too ill to go in. Yeah. She's uncomfortable. Yeah. And I always remember, I think, like I remember as a kid, do you remember being ill off school? Because it's like, it's a weird vibe because you're like, you know you should be doing something. Yeah. And then you're at home and like I always remember thinking, I didn't know this world existed. Yeah. Daytime yeah. telly, yeah. 11.30, yeah. the gentle tip tap of the postman walking up and down the street. It's a weird thing, isn't it? The pensioners across the road going to Tesco's for their morning coffee. Yeah. It's like a world that you don't see normally. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But I always... I. I always felt guilty if I was off school and it never sat Same. easy with me. Same. My mum made me I feel couldn't, guilty. I couldn't, I want, no, she, she didn't. Uh, she, so she was like, well, I've got to go to work. And I, I was like, mum, yeah, I'm being sick down myself. Yeah, but you know, I've got to go. So can you make it for the afternoon? <laughs> I was like, no, I'm vomiting everywhere. Oh. Last lesson, <laughs> 15 minutes. But it is, I think it is. No, but it must be hard if you can't get child. I mean, we're lucky because we're yeah. working at home. But... Yeah, we are. And I said that to Olivia this morning. I said, just kick back, chill, because your mum and dad are I, I always struggled to chill and I needed to. What, when you were ill? Yeah, I mean, if you're really, really poorly, then you, 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 you're not even interested in watching. I think that's a real measure of a kid. If they're not even interested <laughs> on going on the DS or... I just going to say... What you say? I was going to say... My... Can't, their eyes can't focus on YouTube. It's like... Uh, I remember oh. once when I was ill... And I was upstairs in bed and uh, so my mum was downstairs, my mum was downstairs and it was like, my friend came to call mm. uh, uh, and, and they were like, he was like, it's not coming out. It's not, because he, he wasn't in the same year as me. He didn't yeah. know I was off. He was like, Phil? Yeah. And he went, what do you mean? She said, he's so ill, he's so ill, he hasn't gone on his Amiga. <laughs> Like my computer. So that's how like, ill he that's is. That's how bad And it Phil is. was like, Ooh, oh dear, God. is he going to make it? Yeah. Do we need to call the priest? <laughs> Do we need to call, gather around his bed? Yeah. My mum always, you know what I always remember? I always been in and out of sleep all mm. day, mm. like sweaty, hot, mm. cold. Horrible. And then I always remember just like a Lucasade bottle appearing. Yeah. yeah. Every sort of, because Lucasade was Guess the what I just took option. up to live? A Lucasade. No, she was absolutely buzzing. What? Peach iced tea. Oh, that's a good option. She loves it. Yeah, and when it's you're not really, really cheered her up. But yeah, I think I always remember being off scale. I remember watching. It's so weird. I remember. Is that very middle class, a peach iced tea? Yeah, it makes her sound like absolute wankers. Particularly. <laughs> um, <laughs> Lucas said never did us any harm. Yeah, it did, well, it, it doesn't have any medicinal quality, did it? It was made by Beecham's. Do you know that? No, it, it's one. It is Beecham's. No, it, I thought it was Coca Cola. No, it's, it was Beecham's originally, wasn't it? 
No. I don't know. I, I'm sure, I don't know. I'm sure I've not like, dreamt you've that. You've got me wrong I'm now. I'm sure I've not dreamt that. But I know it's just it's sugar. It's just sugar. It's glucose. It's just stupid. Which does serve a purpose, obviously, for sport, because yeah. you're replacing glucose, but, but you're not. No, if you're ill, you're not burning I'll just, off, I'll just love the idea of just going like, oh, I'm so, I've got so much energy now, I'm just going to nap for the day. Yeah. Do you know what the barometer is for a lot of men, mm. older, like when you're in your 30s, 40s, if you're too ill to knock one out? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. If you're too ill to even, how ill are you? Um, well, I'm too ill to wank, mate. Well, oh, God. Is everything all right? Do we need to yeah. do a fundraiser? Should yeah. we set up a Just Giving page? Yeah. When you know that that isn't an option, yeah, exactly. you are ill, mate. And what is it for women? Same. No. Is it not? What is it? Um, what is it for you, if you can't be asked to... Too ill to... Um, oh, you haven't got an equivalent, really, have you? Too ill to you haven't got go a... for coffee with your mates? Yeah. You're too ill. I don't know. I don't know. I think that's a... Yeah, that's I don't lame, think it? it's just men who are idiots. That's lame. But I, I think I remember watching Romancing in the Stone with Michael Douglas. Yeah. And I remember watching that on VHS. Yeah. And that's... The, oh, uh, I love buying a film on. It's yeah, so good. It was a different era, innit? Because I was too we ill. We used to watch Team Wolf. I remember being too ill to change the video. So da, I just... Da, da, da. Do you know what I did? Just rewound yeah. it, watched it again. Double, <laughs> double Douglas. Da, 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 da. Stop sound effect. I'm doing the music for... Team Wolf, yep. it's a brilliant soundtrack. Well, anyway, so mm. she's upstairs, but it was... Sweet. Scotty, Scotty, that was his name. People used to, when it was out, people always Did used to say, are you a wolf, mate? And I was like, no, I can't grow a beard. Look how baby my face But look at you now, is. you're quite wolfy now. I am quite wolf-like at the moment. Uh, this is... Wolverine. Seven days, though. Growth. Yeah, that, that's mm. it. It's not, it's not impressive for seven days. Some oh, people, I think it is. No, some people at seven, some men out there at seven days look like hostages. Well, you, that look proper Terry weight. You do look chained. quite beardy, and I <clears throat> I like you with a beard. Yeah, I do. Oh, do you know what? Someone told me a funny story. Oh God, I can't remember who it was. Who uh, they met Terry weight? Oh God, what was it? Shit, which gigs have I done this weekend? Isle of Wight? No, where was I yesterday? Crawley. Crawley. Uh, Cheltenham. Crawley. Oh, was it Cheltenham? Crawley. Uh, I think it was Crawley. I forget who it was who was talking to me. Oh, yeah, Angela Barnes. Yeah. She's a great comedian. We were having such a laugh. And she said she was once on a train. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't take credit for this, but no. just the beard and the hostage yeah. thing. And everyone was standing up. They were all crying. And she said, she turned to the person next and she went, God, it's so claustrophobic in here. It's really uncomfortable. Do you know who it was? Yeah. Terry Way. It won. <laughs> it was. He had a TW on his briefcase. And she said, I just turned to Terry Way and said, God, this train's uncomfortable. <laughs> Bearing in mind, he'd been chained to a radiator oh my god <laughs> to be fair i think he went it is a bit what, uh, brings what, back memories what is it where was he captured um is it beirut or libya somewhere like that one. what it? was he a journalist yeah oh, oh no i don't know i don't know the backstory you always ask me these things and i wish i knew i want to know about terry wait yeah oh. well you'll have to we'll wait have to google it you'll uh, have to terry wait you'll have to terry wait anyways we're hostage but yeah what i'm saying is some men can grow massive beards. I yeah. just can't. I have got the annoying little thing of hairs in the corner of my mouth. Does that itch you? Yeah, so every now and then I'll be talking and I'll be like, it feels like a Brillo pad. Oh, no. I've so never known that. I'm going to have a shave this afternoon. Um, i tell you what did make me laugh, though, this weekend. Liv went to a friend's house, didn't she, for a yeah. sleepover. Yeah. And she started wearing my T-shirts. Yes. Yes. I, are you sure you haven't encouraged it? A little bit. Well, to make you feel like you're cool. Yeah, and a connection. Yeah. With her, yeah, but uh, well, well, she saw my dead man's shoes t shirt, the yeah. Shane Meadows thing, yeah, and she said she sent me a picture saying, Can I borrow this t shirt because it's really cool for school? Cool yeah. for school, yeah. So if she had a non uniform day and I gave her that, I mean, yeah. it is quite a, it's a, it's him, I find it a bit disturbing, with a shush with the gas mask on, yeah. it says one down written in blood, yeah. but you know, it is a cool t shirt. I mean, no other kid's gonna have that at 12. No. So she wore that to school, then she went up to. A friend of ours, didn't she, for a sleepover? You sent yeah. me some pictures. She's rocking my original Ghostbusters t shirt. Well, Sam took the pictures, but yeah. Glow in the dark Ghostbusters. Brilliant. Another kid was there wearing their dad's jacket. I know. There's a thing going Ava. on at the moment, you know? Yeah. Do you know what's coming back in? What? As Sam said to me, look, the fashion is baggy, big and baggy. Yeah, but Billy Eilish has been doing that for yeah, years. But now they're wearing your clothes. But I remember wearing my dad's clothes. Really? Yeah. Do you? Yeah. What did you wear though? I used to suit and tie. No, I used to borrow his jumpers. I used to love wearing his jumpers. What, a lot of big baggy flappy yeah. sleeves. Mm. 
I don't think I've ever thought about wearing my dad's. Oh yeah, I always. No. I I remember going in my dad's wardrobe and having a route round. Well, I'm just going like this is alright. Yeah, I wear that one. That's nice and soft. My dad, my dad wasn't great fashion wise. My dad bought what my mum made him wear, so he never really had an mm. opinion. So yeah. it, like, if if you wanted to wear sort of slazenger mm. or sort of like yeah. Asda, yeah, it's never there was no there was no hidden gems in that wardrobe. No. It's not like I'd open it up and he'd be rocking Fred Perry. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It wasn't really much. Painting overalls, wandering yeah. around looking like a shit Mario. Your dad <laughs> always looks smart though, doesn't he? He did, but he never really had a say. Whereas my dad, he wears 30-year-old T-shirts that are so thin you could use them as tracing paper. They look But that. they're comfortable. So he like, if my mum ever sort of threatened to get rid of them, he'd be like, don't you dare. I think it's weird when a bloke hits a certain age. Like mm. there's a lot of old men I see wandering. I see a lot of older guys in, mm. in fleeces, in gigs. Yeah. And I always think that's such a, that's such yeah, a. Yeah, my dad avoids the fleece. Well, that's such a decision where you just go, I'm out, but I've got nothing. Yeah. You know, that's an admission of like, I'm going yeah, yeah. out. I've got nothing. Or that you, you well, you're choosing comfort, aren't you? Practicality I, over I, I think, style. I think also as well, you, you can see the conversation. I don't, mm. she's just going, you can't wear that. It's like, I've got nothing. Yeah. I'm into camping wear. Yeah. You look like you've been fired through millets. Oh, but do you know what? I sometimes do that on the school run though. What, just like? I, just, ugh, I don't make be any asked. effort. I'm, I look awful. You look all right. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I just can't be bothered. I know. Terrible. It's a lot of effort to it's dress with. It's a lot of sharp, effort, isn't it? Isn't it? But she, she's, um, she did make me laugh as well because I was away, wasn't she? Mm, and mm. she messaged me for the iPlayer password did live. Did she? And uh, I was in the middle of a gig. Right. And she messaged me. And then, you know, on WhatsApp, you yeah. can tell the two blue ticks. Fuck, she's oh, over now, yeah. doesn't it? If the two blue ticks. Yeah. The two blue ticks what is did a she nightmare. Say? Like, the two blue ticks is... Come yeah. on, mate. Yeah. Come Hurry on. Up. Unless that says... I'm waiting. Unless that says typing. Yeah. I'm we're on not, to yeah, you. Yeah, we're on And to then you. she went, she said, and I've got it written down here, went, she, she says, you know you've seen it, bro. <laughs> I love it. You can't get away with nothing. Yeah. So then I had to instantly reply. Yeah. The thing is, you know what makes me laugh about her? She does say bra. Bra. Like that. Come on, bra. Oh, come on, bra. You've seen it, bra. And she's so not gangster is our daughter. But she's, but she's funny. She makes me laugh. She makes me laugh. I mean, she, I think she does say it ironically. Yeah. But it's funny. Come on, bro. You've yeah. read the message. Get and on And you know it. what Safe always says, which it makes me waz. Oh. Love. All right, love. Come on, love. A six-year-old saying that, it's just hilarious. Like I said, it's channeling the inner nana. It is. When we're watching, when we're watching Rick I don't Stein. I so, love. When she's watching Rick Stein and yeah. he says, it's like, a, it feels like I'm back home. And she went... You're in Bordeaux. It's not Yorkshire, love. That's what he said. I know, it's so funny. You're, it's not Yorkshire, love. I love it. Love. Come on, love. Can you just top me up a bit of coffee? Oh, yeah, give me a second. Go on, get it now. Now? Yeah, Live. no, it's only there. Oh. Live, live coffee top up. Okay. Right, here it goes. All right, then. He's had to take his headphones oh. off. Oh, my knees. I don't even care that I've not got milk. Really? Here, listen, sure? can people hear that? Oh. <gasps> Oh, did you hear that, everyone? That's very strong. I'm really glad we've done that, though, because at this point into the podcast, I've ran out of coffee, and yeah. it annoys me that I haven't got another one at the ready. All right, well, you should have planned Cheers. it, bro. No, we have planned it, bro. bro. All right, there you go. Um, nice one, bro. I was having a chat with my mum. Yeah. My mum doesn't want to speak to me on the phone, really. She sort of gets to a point because she's always busy. Mags is always busy, isn't she? Mm. She's a whirlwind of activity. Yeah. If you chat to her, there's always something going on. Yeah. She's got washing to do. She's hoovering. This is weird. This what? is weird you're saying this because me and your mum always talk for ages and I think she does want to talk to me, <laughs> but I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> What's the common denominator? Nobody wants to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what annoys oh, me? God. Do you know what annoys me? I hate phone I calls. I don't want to talk to me. I hate phone sometimes calls. Sometimes I hear myself. Do you know? Can you I know just what? say, sometimes I hear myself talking and I think, yeah. oh, someone shut this boring twat up. Do you know what? Saturday night. Stop pishing the pen about. Okay, Saturday. No, don't coffee. take it away. That's the coffee. No. If you click that pen one more time, do you know, do you know what I'm going to do? Yeah. I'm going to shove it up your flute. <laughs> <laughs> Saturday night, I'm sat watching Macca. Macca, yeah. And you rang and I ignored you. Yeah. I'm going to confess now. You screamed my call? I let it ring off. You. I knew you had. I knew it. I, I, I knew can't it. Be, but what have you got to say to me at that time of the night? <laughs> Imagine if I'd have been, rolled the car and I'd been in a ditch. You'd have rang again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I 
wouldn't. Yes, Imagine yes. my last bit of energy. I managed to, is there anyone? I, yeah. I'd just be like, who do I ring? Yeah. The woman I love yeah. that's the mother of my children. Right. Like, no, let me just explain. And then I just, I manage just with it. Yeah. No. And then you look and you just go, she loves you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who's this dick? Oh, it'll yeah. be summer. It'll, be summer. Is, it'll be summer about the podcast. Right, the she thing is, she, bro. Did you not ring anyone? I yeah. rang my wife, but she she screened my call. You sque- you ditched me. Yeah, the thing is, bro. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I saw you. The two blue ticks. Yeah, listen up, bruv. Right, what I'm saying is like, um, don't ring me at 11.30 at night, right? <laughs> See, all the time I know you're in. You, oh, Because I can God. tell, do you know what my mum does? Go on. It really made me laugh. And it, and I actually I actually laughed. And she laughed. Go on. So what happens is, I ring, and she goes, ah, yeah. And she's dead happy at the start. Mm. We have about 35, 40 yeah. seconds of, of good. Of good. Yeah. And I sort of go, she goes, oh, yeah, you know, they start chatting and stuff. And then I'll say something. I'll go, oh, this, it's a, uh, I said, I was watching that guy, that Mick Lynch, the strike, yeah. Rail strike guy, and I said he's amazing. Have you seen how good he's doing? Yeah. The me- he's making the media look like absolute bellends. Yeah. Like journalists are asking him questions, going, "Why have you checked? Why is your Facebook profile a baddie from mm-hmm. uh, Thunderbirds or yeah. something?" And he's going like, "Is this the best you can do?" He's saying that to mm. them. Is this all your training? Mm. They look ridiculous. Yeah. Do you know why? Because they've got nothing on him. Because yeah. he's the most, he's the best media trained person I've ever seen. Yeah. I, I urge you to watch it. If you're ever doing public speaking, yeah. so I, and I was like, God, he's amazing, Mum. I was like, and she was just like, and I could hear her. Then what I hear is she looks, I can see her looking, there's washing, she'll be in the middle of something, she'll be doing like ironing or she'll be prepping something, and she's looking and she's going, now in her brain she's going, I've got to get out of this now. This conversation, I've got to get out of mm. it. So what she does, it's like they're in a plane, we're in a plane, we're chatting, <laughs> and she's gets the parachute on as we're talking. Yeah. It's like she slides it on over her yeah. shoulders. And she's looking, just going, hmm, yeah, the strike guy. Mm, okay. Door's gone open. Yeah. With a, she sat the door open. I can feel a dis yeah. I can feel a disconnecting going. going, fading yeah. on me. <laughs> And she goes, this is a, this is mum. She knows what she's doing yeah. here. Because she goes, oh, the strike guy. Oh, your dad enjoyed him. Right. Oh, that was it. She was gone. <laughs> that was it. Out the door. Yeah. And then I just went, She shouted, hang on, Roy. Hang on. And there's my little voice just going, I was just about to ask how you were. Yeah. And then just nothing. nothing. And then my dad just comes in going, hello. <laughs> and I'm like. She's just bailed on me. I said she's she just dumped me. She's dumped me on the call. And you were dad like, she does it all the time. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I was going to ask her. And, and I shared she's to my dad. She's never done it to me. I, I want to ask her how she is. And my mum just went, oh, no, I just thought you wanted to speak to you. She bailed on me. Yeah, you were boring her, Doc. You were boring her. You went off on she one, She never bails you? on you. No, I don't bore her, though. <laughs> you, do, you, you bore me. <laughs> So basically... When do I ever ring you? No, so basically... Let's have sh- I ever rang you? Never. <laughs> I don't think you have. Oh, shit. Do you know what's happened here? Should let- we have a look at how many incoming calls you've got from me? <laughs> Three. <laughs> Once on our wedding day. Uh, do you know what? Go on. I'll tell you what. This is the situation. I've got a wife mm. who screens my calls. Yeah. I've got a mum who bails on me. Yeah, she, got- she jumps out the plane. I've got a dad who makes small talk about strikes. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I've got no one. I've got a daughter who calls She's me on bra. She's on to you, yeah. Who's on to me. Yeah. So who have I, I got? I know you've seen it, bruv. So who am I ringing? Who's going to listen to me? No one. Thank God I do stand up. That's the only time people listen to me. Because yeah. they have to. Yeah. And they've paid to. Exactly. But yeah, it, do, it does make me laugh. That. Doesn't bode well, does it, darling? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, God. Yeah, but when I see your name flash up, I'm like, oh, God, what's he oh, want now? a moment now? of dread. Yeah, it's just like, what's he want oh, now? And it's like. Let's just give an example of a few of your phone calls yesterday. I've got the telly on the wall. That's, wait, that's wait, brilliant. Well done. Wait a minute. Assassination. Yeah. A scared is character. Go on, yeah, then. so you rang up and you went, yeah, the telly's on the wall. I was like, that's brilliant. Right, great. Bye. And you rang up to tell me that. And it's again, it's because you've got nobody to talk to. So you're just so excited no about. Friends. Uh, Sometimes I tell Bob the cat. Oh, good. And he goes... All right, mate, nice one. Yeah. If that cat could talk, I know. he would be my best mate. He'd feel sorry for you. He'd, he'd stop listening. He'd just... Imagine if he just went, I'm just going to go and no, lick another cat's you, arsehole, mate. No, can you imagine if he lifted up his paws and removed <laughs> two, like, earplugs? Meow. <laughs> 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 you know what? 
cat earplugs. Imagine you get dissed yeah. by the cat. He just went, huh? Sorry, <laughs> got my earplugs in. Just wow. Put a little pair of yeah, AirPods yeah, in. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, mate, yeah. you're really boring. Yeah. Oh, just pop these back in. Um, yeah. Oh, I know. Dear. I know. No one wants to listen to me. I've got to think of more interesting patter. I t- do you know what? Um, when I set the telly up, mm. we've put this new telly on the wall, which is scary as shit. Telly, telly on the wall. Who's the fairest of us all? Oh. Scott is with his new telly. Can I just say? So excited he is, everybody. I was really excited. But can I just say? Scott was like, "Should we get a forty-three inch or fifty inch?" And I'm like, "I don't give a shit. Should I get a forty-three inch then?" I don't give a shit. It's on the wall. Don't give a shit. Oh, it's got a it's got a a one thing that you click. Don't give a shit. It's got this and that. <laughs> don't give a shit. I've set it all up. Don't give a shit. I've bought a booster for the area. It works now. Don't give a shit. That's our conversation about the mm. telly. You, you couldn't be less interested. I am so not interested. But I, I always feel worried. It, it, it gave me a little bit of a bum twitch putting it on the wall because I'm just thinking. But you were impatient, weren't you, what child? Do you, what do you mean? You wouldn't wait until you had assistance. Well, you're not interested anyway. You're not going to keep your end of the bargain. No, I would have helped you though if it meant a TV wasn't going to smash on the floor. I'll tell you what, I did flick on when I was watching. Yeah. The Mask Singer. Is in America now. Yeah. Have you seen the difference? I have watched it. Have you watched it? Yeah. Americans are weird, aren't they? I, I, Go I, on. No, because what I mean is like I there was some Americans in a gig last night. I did. Was it Jenny McCarthy on the? Um, yeah. Yeah. T- t- panel. On the panel. So I, I, there was two Americans in a gig last night. Right. And they in the audience. Yeah. They're amazing. Their enthusiasm. Yeah. They carried the whole gig. Really. They're so happy. Yeah, they they for a country that's mental. Yeah, when you think about that country, yeah, they've just done that, made abortion illegal in some states. Yeah. They've got gun problems. Yeah, yet they're really whoa. Yeah, it's 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 a. I do think there's some they're program different. Mm. They're very different I, as I, people. I think they're brought up to be. Um, they're winners. Loud. Like. Well, they're also, brought up to be like vocal, like. Yeah. Don't you be shy and retiring you. You stand up and you let people know that you're enjoying yourself. Well, I listen to a lot of American radio, you know, mm. on a night in bed, an American podcast. I'm mm. fascinated by it because mm. there's a psychological difference. Yeah. Because they're all like, this, they start, this, this, they'll start going like this. They'll go, uh, before we go any further, I just want to say this is the greatest country on the planet, isn't it, guys? Isn't it? And yeah. they'll all go, yeah. I mean, people are envious of our way of life. It's just. Oh, it's God bless America. And then they all like, and I'm like, you can't, they don't do that on the one show. Imagine like on yeah. one show, uh, isn't Britain ah, great, isn't it? <laughs> all these delayed trains yeah. and everyone's miserable. And it's, we've been led by a bloke who looks like he's brushed his hair with a fucking stamp mm. or <laughs> brushed his hair with a cushion. Mm. But isn't, it great, isn't Britain great? Because everyone on that sofa would go, no, it's shit, mate. It's shit. But it's not shit. No, but what I mean is we don't have that sense of... No. That, it's not arrogance. We it's don't just, bang as drum, do it's we? It's just a weird tribal... No, but you're right. It is an arrogance. We don't have that arrogance. We, we have the... Um, British sort of... Oh, God. We, like, we roll our eyes. We do. And we're like... We like underdogs, don't we? And we're like... But also, we do, We have got... That is a weakness. Because yeah. Because we're not winners. No, and that's kids right. Are not, in America, kids are brought up to be like, you are the best, goddammit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to be yeah. the best. You are the best. You're going to get that well, scholarship. Well, it's almost like the Come difference on, Rory. between yeah. private school and, and state school, like we've said before, that it's almost like when you go to a private school, you are, you, you feel invincible almost. It's like you can do anything. Confidence. Confidence. There's an air of confidence. Yeah. That. All Amer- they want all Americans to have that confidence, don't they? Well, they're embarrassed. Pe- we get embarrassed in this country. Mm. I've said it before. Like you have people who, like, when I was did well at school, I started yeah. to do well in my exams. Yeah. I was called SWAT and stuff. Yeah. And then they were like, "What are you doing in the library, mate? Trying to better yourself? Yeah, <laughs> it's like a, yeah. you're trying to make a better future for yourself. Yeah, you loser. loser. Have you seen this bellend? Look at him. He's revising. <laughs> he wants to do well in life. Can you believe?" <laughs> Come on, mate. Just be like us, brah. And <laughs> brah. Uh, but what 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 I find wonderful about it is they have this sense of drama mm. that I, I, I'm genuinely fascinated by it because it's like a it is yeah. like um like a tribalism. It's definitely a way. It, There's a way, and that's why they do win. That's why they do the best at sports and stuff like that. Sure, because it's not because they've got millions of more people. No, it's more it's more like they do have that sense of winning and achieving. Yeah. That's what they do, you yeah. know. But. Well, it's a well-known thing, isn't it, that they've looked into the psychology of our 
in the English football team, haven't they? Yeah. And that we are, it, it's a real stumbling block, isn't it? It's like, yeah. we can't win. We find it uncomfortable. We're going to be, we're going to be nervous. Find, Something's going to trip us up. We find it uncomfortable. Instead of thinking, no, we can. Yeah. We can. We will. We, we're not winners, are we? But be the, the football. But what made me laugh is that the, the, um, the mass singer thing, you know when they reveal the mass singer mm. and they go, "Well, why did yeah. you do it?" And in the UK, yeah. they just go, "It's really lovely to be yeah. here" and all this lot. Yeah. The mass singer one, they go really serious in go America. On. So this is a genuine thing. They said, like at the end, like they turn, they took the mask off the guy. And, and did you know who it was? No, no. It's, I think he did. Like it was the third minion in yeah. Despicable Two, yeah. Despicable Me Two, or something. It's like I've never seen him before no. in my life. And then they go, they go. So why did you want to do mass singer? He was like, oh my word, it's just like. Um, I feel like up here, you know, like I'm embodying my daughter's spirit and she's with me on the stage and we're together and it's a sense of joy. The world is a dark place and I, I want to bring the gift of light to help people find their way through the madness and put in this mask. I feel like you just put a mask on me. Yeah, yeah. This is not, and that, what, what we actually want to go is go, and it was 50 grand. Yeah. That's the reality. But they, they have this. 50 bags in my pocket, and, love. And people stood up sort of going yeah. like and saluting the flag. And I know. It, it's, it is strange. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I, I quite fascinated by it yeah so anyway i just thought, would you like a pinch of it would you like a little do you, would you like to spend a week maybe just being I, I think, american I and over so. the top and a bit of a jock yeah i once had a meeting when yeah. at my old job and there were all americans in this mm. meeting it was fucking great the energy yeah the energy on this thing they were like what did you think wally yeah. <laughs> there's a guy called wally perfect. he's the most american that's perfect and he was like good job good job yeah, guys good job high-fiving and stuff yeah good like, job this is good we feel motivated we feel excited i love what you're saying scott excellent work what do you think rory i agree with wally let's go for lunch yeah Woo! yeah and it was like that and i was like this i've never had this reception no. for a, a design concept stereotypes are based on reality there's like, something the the in it there's something yeah. in it Sports day. Ah, oh. it was good, wasn't it? It was lovely. Sophia had a little so sports nice. day. So nice. What did you nice. think of it? I loved it. Different now, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Explain yeah, yeah, why yeah, it's yeah, different. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I don't know if it's. I don't think it's different at secondary schools. They still do traditional one hundred, two hundred, you know, relay all that shenanigans. Yeah. But at junior school um, and infant school, what they tend to do is more like activity based. So. We watch them in groups rotating around a series of activities where they all get to have a go. Yeah. There's no real winners or losers. So all the parents tend to stand around yeah. the racetrack. Yeah. The kids are in the middle. Yeah. And they move from activity yeah. to activity. They're, also, they're put into countries. It's like a carousel of activities. They're put into countries. So they do like little yeah. hurdles. Yeah. They do like football skills. Throwing. They throw a javelin, which is like yeah. a foam javelin. Dart, yeah. Foam dart, which looks really hard to throw. Yeah, but some people were really some wanging were it. Really yeah. wanging it. Yeah. But but it did it did make me think like you know, it's it's sort of a different era. Yeah. Because we had that, and then again in America they wouldn't yeah. do that, would they? Do you not think? No, they were like they've got to be a winner, they've got to be a loser, yeah. and the loser has got to yeah. know he's a loser because yeah. it's the only way so he's like, going to stop being a goddamn so loser. Be, yeah, it's almost like Rory, you're not doing this race because yeah. you're shit. Yeah. You threw Matthew's that phone Matthew's better down. than you. Put He's the phone faster. down. down. Yeah. You, you, you know, you're not good enough to throw But I want from... to do the 200 metres, coach. No, you, you're not fast enough. You come back next year, you might make the cut. Now get in the bin. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> Just send them off crying. Yeah. There is that level of competition. Because I do think, like, do you know the brutal truth? Mm. Is when everyone's a winner, mm. it is good in that kids don't feel, yeah. you know, like they're yeah. isolated. But life isn't. Right. Here's the, here's the, the thing message. is, life thing is, is competitive, isn't it? I hear what you're saying, right? Because this is, again, it's the old argument, isn't it, of it's great that we've made progress in so many areas in society in terms of, like, rights for children. Yeah. We listen to them now. It's not like a sadistic 1950s where you've got just authoritarians who just rule the roost yeah. and kids' kids' rights and feelings aren't really accounted for. You know, we've gone the other way now where, you know, children have rights, thank God, and they're protected and we do the best for them. 
But yeah, you start to wonder, have we gone too far in protecting them because we're not exposing them to competition or... But I don't... But I have to say... It's not competition. We're not exposing them to loss and yeah. defeat. But what I'm saying is, is that I think we overanalyze this yeah. ultimately. Yeah. Because yeah. I just think they will still experience losing. Yeah. They will. Yeah. There's no getting away from Particularly it. Particularly if they're a child of mine. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, they will still experience that. So I think there's no harm in making an event that's fun and that we aren't going to have kids feeling like they're shit. There's obviously yeah. no harm, you know, at this stage in their lives when they're six, surely there's no harm in them being, like like we say, the football that Sophia goes to on a Saturday, it's not about whether you make the A team or the B team. It's not about whether you can win the league. It's about skill. It's about fun. It's about you, your fitness. It's about all of those things. And that's why she lo- That's why she springs out of bed on a Saturday morning it. and she loves it. So team being a team player, yeah, participate. Yeah. So, but, but later on, when she's a bit older and she has the maturity to cope with other things, then if she wanted to pursue it and play for a proper competitive team, then brilliant, go for it. Well, I remember sports day at my school. Yeah. And I did used to feel anxiety on the yeah, run up because yeah. you had to do an event. Yeah. That, that it was, I think we were, do you know our era? Mm. We were on the cusp of cruelty. These changes, that, yeah. That sort of, yeah. Where it was still, yeah. no teacher. It was still old they, school, wasn't you, it? Because I think you're, you are right. When you, when you have a moment like that mm. as a kid, mm. it is quite hard to process. Yeah. It can end up sending you on a weird path of, yeah. I feel like I'm inadequate. Yeah. Because you, you don't, there's no counselling for no. it. And I remember like I used to do, um, they gave us proper javelins. Yeah. I was like 12. Yeah. And I remember I always used to crack the javelin on the back of yeah, my head. I yeah, couldn't get yeah, that throw yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, you used to twat yourself. Twat myself yeah. with it. I mean, they used you to weren't give, throwing it straight, were you? They used it's to like... give kids like shot puts and hammers. I mean, it was a different era back yeah, then. I mean, yeah. a bit, bit dodgy. But then they, I remember one year when they signed me up for the 800 metres. Yeah. And I was never a good runner. No. I got better at running as I got older. You did. But there was nothing. It, it was that moment of humiliation yeah. when I know I'm last yeah. and I'm wheezing and running yeah. around the track. And yeah. then there's just everyone in the school watching yeah. you, yeah. slow clapping. Yeah. That happened but to me. Yet, and if that hadn't happened, I wouldn't have been a comedian. No, well, exactly. <laughs> Genuinely, yeah. I held on to that pain. Yeah. You know. But the thing is, you're right, because I was very sporty and I was always, you know, they always wanted me to do all the races because I'd win or... You yeah, know, you were good. Because I was really... I was into my athletics. You were American. You were like, whoa, come on, yeah. But the, no, but the point is, is that it was a strength of mine. But what if it wasn't a strength of mine? Like, you know, like I look at Liv, our daughter, she's not particularly like, she's not like athletic in terms of like, she doesn't do She'll athletics. She'll do it, but she's not yeah, she's passionate not, about it. No, and, and so for her, it would be a completely different experience yeah. to what I experienced because I loved it and I enjoyed it. She's, but what if you don't enjoy it? And as a teacher, I've seen this in kids, like it's... It is quite traumatic for kids who aren't that way inclined. And, you know, and the same goes for art. You know, if you've got a kid in an art class who hates drawing and, mm. and really struggles to draw, it's torture. Mm. But because we loved art, it's bliss. And it's the same with everything, isn't it? And that's why eventually, obviously, you can choose, you make choices, and you know, and play to your own strengths. But I just think, I don't think there's any harm like, to give an example, on that day at Sports Day last week, we won't mention any names, but there's a little boy that we know and he was really upset. He didn't want to take part. Um, and I went over and comforted him a little bit. And he, he said in his own words, he says, if I if I lose, they're all going to laugh at me. Yeah, so this is a six-year-old. Man. And then he really was upset. And so anyway, we gave him a bit of a bit of comfort. And then we said, you know, nobody's going to laugh at you. And the teacher says, and if they do, I'll be having a word with them. So we gave him that bit of reassurance. And, and I said, and if you, if you take part and you do, you know, I'm going to be cheering you on. And anyway, he did it and he was absolutely buzzing at the end because he'd had a go and done it and nobody had laughed at him. And so he felt, he felt empowered. He felt encouraged. So do you think that that's something we've lost is that children sometimes have to feel uncomfortable to feel like they've achieved something. Well, and it was don't well, it was a fine line, that. wasn't it? It yeah. was a fine line because we encouraged him to take part, but it was a safe environment to take part. Yeah. It wasn't that he was going to be in a running race where um, they were going to be a clearly defined winner, you know, whatever. Yeah. It's, that's the pressure when it's just all eyes it was, on you. Yeah, it was like, it was a race, but it was also a safe, it wasn't going to be... Mm. 
I can't articulate what I'm trying to say, but you know, not it, exposed. It, no, he was. It was a safe environment for him to have a go. Well, I do think there's nothing worse because the, the, the problem is, it's like in America and in, in in like China and all these people that go into the Olympics. The really weird thing about it is, if your kid is gonna be good at anything, mm. then they have to be good from four, five, six. Yeah, that's how long it takes. Yeah. So the pressure on that kid. Yeah. It's like, you know, this is this is the weird thing. Sometimes I think in the UK we miss talent because we don't feel comfortable in pushing a or child saying, or saying, you're really good at this, this needs to be your life. But surely... Like, and, 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 and ethically, is it even correct? Who's got it right? Because then what happens if they don't make it? What happens if it just doesn't happen? And then they've, they've given and sacrificed know, and I, all that pressure. I don't you know. See what I mean? I find that a really hard balance to, it, to hit because... It, on Saturday at football, there was a lad who was playing football and he was clearly better than all the other kids. He was brilliant. And I said to Paul afterwards, the coach, I was like, I said, God, that lad over there, he was really good. Like he was yeah. tackling, placing the ball. He was brilliant. And he was only like so sage. He was he clearly had skill, a skill natural and a, ability. a natural ability. So, you know. How do you harness that ability? Without wrecking their life. With, well, no, not necessarily that, but you... A, well, my first protocol would be he clearly enjoys it, yeah. right? It's not He's not being made to do that. He enjoys playing. So that's the first tick. Like, good, he enjoys it. Second of all, I think, because you've always talked about this, like how much do you, how much do you encourage and, and push them towards something before it becomes that they're not wanting to do it or... Because children as well don't have the foresight you have, which is... Or, well, they don't have is, the maturity either, do but, they? But also, this is their window to do things yeah. without pressures of life. Yeah. And I always think sometimes children are, are odd because like, you have that moment where like, if you're a kid and say you, say you, like, you don't want to do like, yeah. abseiling, yeah. you're terrified, it's in your head, mm. and then you get to the top, you do it, and it's like, oh my God, that's, I've done that. Yeah. And then that becomes part of your character. Yeah. And then that helps you... Com, com, overcome other challenges yes yeah so it's a fine line between mm. just going well don't do it then yeah and I, I do feel like that's where we sometimes fall down in this country well I think. I think you've i think that is the the you've you've hit the nail on the head it is a fine line and it's mm. about judging that line well you don't want to be one of those parents as well you see because there was always those parents when I used to play football. Yeah. They would get frog marched back to their cars. Yeah. How yeah. embarrassing is that? Let's just ch just just see what you've done here. You were yelling at a nine year old mate, well, just going, "Man on, man, bastard, check his legs. Yeah. Come on, yeah, referee!" Yeah, yeah. Squaring up to a referee, and the bloke's like, Look, "I'm just a plasterer, love. I'm, yeah. do <laughs> I'm doing this in my spare time. Come on, mate. That Are is you blind?" We're on a shit pitch on a park, mate. There's dog turds all know, over. This is not the FA Cup. Yeah. And you come going, let my live my dreams through you. That's what they're really shouting. Well, it, yeah. These are my dreams. It does they're make not you wonder. yours. And the thing is as well, this was another thing, and I think we've said this before, but you do, it does matter to kids being pigeonholed. It does make mm -hmm. them feel mm -hmm. either good about themselves or bad about themselves because with the best will in the world, we try not to obsess about setting at school. But kids are so aware. They, they'll they say to me, Miss, are we in the bottom set? What set am I? What set am I? They are obsessed with it. And they know. They're not stupid. Society is about status. Yeah. And it always will From be. From a very young age. It's Because I've even heard Sophia at age six saying, I'm on, I'm on gold books. I'm on gold books. And it you're like, early. so straight away, you are... There's a hierarchy, isn't there? Yeah. Straight away, they've tapped there, into it. There probably was in caveman times. They'd mm. probably be like, have you seen Steve in that yeah. cave three doors down? Yeah. Well, he outran an antelope. <laughs> he did what? He outran an antelope. What? Yeah. In his, yeah. Just with his bare yeah. feet? Yeah. yeah. He's, he's the fastest hunter. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, so he's like, he's the yeah. man. You know yeah. what I mean? That's probably yeah. what it happened. How it happened, you know. And did, there is something we have lost from Sports Day, though. I do love a parents' race. Oh, God. Well... Did, Did you see that clip? Yeah, it's absolutely hilarious. Funny. I couldn't stop watching it. So, 
So if you haven't seen it, please do yeah. Google it. It's a mom takes part. I think it was in Essex, wasn't it? She's, I've got it here. It's, She's uh, Katie Hannaford. Yeah. Uh, she was encouraged to take it. Her eight-year-old daughter said, yeah. and I can see how it happens. But like, yeah. come on, mom, I don't really run. Come on, loads of parents are doing yeah, it. Yeah. So imagine that yeah. the whole school's there. All oh, right, I'll do yeah. it. So then what happened? And she literally goes ass over to it. Her dress flips up <laughs> over her head. <laughs> She's got a thong on, and it's almost like, I, like I said, I could not stop watching it. I watched it over and over again and it's almost like she sticks her ass up in the air bare ass at this whole row of parents and, and teachers. teachers and it's just you can't it's like a, do you know like on a peacock it's perfect when a yeah. peacock flutters the feathers yeah, it's it like is. a mating yeah, call yeah. and her head she ploughed oh her head into my the, God. do you remember that lime on the grass yeah. when you were a kid it yeah. just burned yeah. she had a big yeah. lime mark the momentum of it it's, she just yeah. went straight over yeah. well, she was running it was it like one like, of those crash test dummies isn't it when the car puts its brakes like, on and she's just slammed it was like, you, and her ass was catching up with the rest of her body <laughs> wasn't it it's like you, you get an ass going through her face do you know what it was like you know if someone pushed Stonehenge's monument over yeah yeah. It was just sort of like that collapsing. Yeah, yeah. And do you know what made me laugh? She was doing it in like wicker moccasins I or something. I thought she was barefooted. Oh, bare, was she barefoot? But she really I, went over, didn't she? But, then, but it was hilarious. What made me laugh is someone had the foresight to just film it. No, but they're all... I mean, I filmed safe. I mean, yeah, true. It, I mean, cameras are everywhere, yeah. aren't they? You're do, not going to miss it. Do you know what made me laugh, though? Go on. This is men are idiots. She's had loads of messages from men. What, she's because a of her ass? Because this is what happens with blokes. Yeah. Sports day. She's wearing a thong. Yeah. That's enough. Yeah. That yeah. men are idiots. Yeah. Sports day, thong, ass, ass out. Yeah. That's that, it. Yes. Well, forget Tinder then. Just, That's the just best get, recruitment. Just, just do a just running do a race sports day all in all over. Yeah. Imagine that. Because so she said she was recognised in Tesco's. She's had messages from people in Australia. Good right. God. And then she said, you know, calling her a MILF. That's blokes yeah. are idiots. One, one, what made me laugh about this is. She, she, said, is, she is quite fit, though. She is attractive, and she said, I've had some very moving messages. One came from someone who told me they're in a really dark place, and that video made really them made smile. Me smile. And I thought, imagine if that it was... It did make me laugh, Imagine if that say. was, like, yeah. so, you know, the therapy. Yeah. Just have a look at this. Yeah, exactly. This bare ass. If I ever have a dark moment, I'll be watching that video again. But I sort of think we should have had parents' races at that school but again I think that would have been brilliant because well, that, that's not about the kids no and it's about it the adults it is funny but I tell you what and, and do you know what as well though I would have needed a sports bra oh god <laughs> my moves would have been smacking myself in the chin because you always think you're fast yeah and blokes end up pulling muscles I'd have but, actually liked to just have a go see yeah I know why don't we suggest but it I'm quite competitive yeah but that's what I would have loved to have raised yeah. Paul Oh, yeah. Is he fast? He looks fast. He'd have kicked your ass, it, mate. I'd have been wheezing. Yeah, and I'd he's have been 10 years younger than you, pal. But also as well, in your head, I yeah. reckon a lot of dads pull muscles, yeah. Yeah. they turn up, there's some of them yeah. done it, they'd have I, had the heart rate you know monitor what? on, they'd have had I'd have fit loved fit. it if you'd have gone arse over to it and your song fell out. <laughs> I'd have loved that. Imagine Can you that. imagine you going down, I, your massive hairy crack shining up? <laughs> <laughs> Sophia, did your dad get his ass out? Yeah. I, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> We're just throwing. Oh no! Someone t- smacking it. No, with you the know what would happen with a man if you got running shorts on and it just pops out. No, yeah. Imagine. Oh, if that's all. If you'd come with your eighties shorts, yeah. and the lining had gone a yeah. little bit. Oh, what was and that? Just your was bollock. it Bob Mortimer who has yeah, it hanging out? Yeah. Oh, imagine, God, imagine just so running funny. towards your own children. Yeah. with your testicles just it's splayed. Both it's a sides. horrendous image, <laughs> just, isn't it? Even parents covering yeah. children's eyes. Up. Awful. What's he got? He didn't say it was the egg and spoon. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> He's got two eggs. Yeah. And only one spoon. <laughs> we quickly mention um, the charts. We we'll mentioned the charts, yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say, um, we sound really, I'm a bit aware that we sound very sad. Now, listen, can I just say this? Right, go on then. Stop being British. Yes. Start Let's being be American. American. So put that filter okay. through an American voice. Okay. Start again. Okay. So guys, we're in the charts. Yeah. We Woo, are yeehaw. slaying it. We are slaying it, no. my friend. Basically, what it means is that we're just really chuffed. We've, we're climbing all the time. Well, we're not. We go up and down. Don't tell them Okay, that. sorry, but yeah. Stop being American. I know, but we... It's really good. And also, we got back into the British comedy podcast charts, which yeah. is 
the one to be in, really, yeah, isn't it? We're in, mate. So we, we're amongst good it's, company. It's really good. It's really encouraging. Do you know what this is called? It's nice. We're building. We're building. We're building. And also, just to say that if you haven't already done so, and we know pretty much all of you have done, um, you can now vote for us on the ACAS Listeners Award. Listeners Choice Award. But Listeners Choice Award. Also, what I've noticed is mm. you can just set up loads of email addresses. Yeah. So, so if there's any Russian every box out there. Email every email you've got. Email, even that old Hotmail that no yeah. one contacts you. Just, just bang it you, in. You know the Hotmail when you set up when yeah. people thought email wasn't going to be the thing? Yeah. Bobby Wingnuts Big Balls at Hotmail.com. Yeah. Yeah. The ones you won't give out to yes. your work dresses. Yeah. You know, you know that, those sort of yeah. things. Loads of numbers and letters. Just get it in get there. Get them all banged in. Yeah. We'd love to win it. it would be amazing we are going to start doing extra episodes i don't think we will win it but, but it'd be nice to be yeah i don't know but we're gonna we're I gonna never get me hopes up about stuff like that we've got big plans we've got extra episodes coming we're going to be doing some extra things we're going to be making this a movement Gemma. Gemma's looking at me now because she's didn't know that was going to be said but it's true this yeah. is going to take over your goddamn life well no i think what's just important is that you're still enjoying listening to it, really. I, I mean, otherwise enjoy, there's no point. There's no po- we enjoy doing it, don't we? Yeah, we do. Sometimes. <laughs> no, we do. No, we, we do. do. It's been lovely. Um, so anyway, that's enough of that. Enough more. We've um, got to talk about Glastonbury. Yeah, Glasto. Oh, my God. Glasto. Right. First thing I want to say. Right. First thing I want to say. Go on. Paul McCartney is... 80 years old. Oh, me God. Now, I don't think people were like going, I can't believe he's playing some of his own stuff. Why is he playing some of the... No, just play the Beatles. Listen, mate, he's 80. He's 80 years old. He's on stage at Glastonbury. He's a legend. He can play what he wants. If he'd have come up there and done the Frog Chorus for an hour, I'd have still watched. He's earned it. He's earned the right... To be on that stage. Well, listen, I, in defence of the people who are, were moaning, but I think... They, they, no, no, but... Listen. Consult no, some bloke no, called Keith on no, the listen, set list. No, listen, I've, I've got mixed emotions about this one. I really enjoyed it. I did. And I felt quite emotional. And if you Same, saw, it got me. If you saw the interview with Steve Coogan, who was in the yeah. audience, he really sort of hit the nail on the head for me. It was just like, you know, we are witnessing... Are you picking your nose? No. Good. Um, <laughs> you really put me off then. Um, so, yeah, he... It's hers. Oh, God. He um, he really sort of hit the nail on the head that we were witnessing something quite special. Historic. It's, it's not going to happen again. No. And um, I really enjoyed it. I just got a really warm feeling from it because I just thought... It, it's just his pedigree. The, the songs he's written, the talent, he'd just pick up the ukulele and play the ukulele, the guitar, the piano. I mean, he's just... To be in that the presence of that is just absolutely well, awesome. But um, you know, obviously people just want the hits, don't they? They do want to hear the, the the ones that we know. And and I don't think there's I can understand when people say that, if I'm honest. I think it's it's to be expected that people want to hear the good stuff. Yeah. Okay? I, I always feel like I always feel like the, the the low end version of that is like if you go and see Chesney Hawks yeah. and everyone's just going When's he doing one and all? Yeah, exactly. When's it? Yeah. This is a new song. Oh, come on. Because I always think to myself, (laughs) um, a festival or concert is not really the place for me to advertise new music. It's when you play it, you buy the album, you listen to it on repeat at home, you listen to it over and over again on the radio. That's how you become familiar with a piece of music. And especially if it doesn't hook you immediately. But can I just say in defence of the artist. Go on. If it's anything like comedy, mm. you might have written hits years ago, but you don't feel the same. You're not that person. To perform something well, you have to feel a connection to the material you're performing. But he did. He does. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, I, I wonder if like it's part of him thinks, well, I'm not that place Music's anymore. not the same as comedy. I don't agree with that. Well, I think to a certain extent, when the art, people used to go on about the Arctic Monkeys going, God, I wish you'd be like the first album singing. Well, yeah. they're not. 17 year old in Sheffield no, living in, in their, yeah. with their mum and dad getting shit faced on a side. They're but millionaires that's, now. But that's the problem with music is people say stuff like that. They'll say, um, whereas you wouldn't say, if, if two jokes are hilarious, you wouldn't say that the second joke that came 10 years after the first joke, well, it's not like his old jokes. Mm. I don't think you'd say that. It's either it makes you laugh or it doesn't make you laugh. Yeah. Whereas with music, 
a style of music can really change. Yeah. And so therefore people do become quite nostalgic about an original sound or whatever. Mm. And they're like, oh, it's not like the first album, which, you know, that's a valid comment. It isn't like the first album. And if you don't like it, well, tough titties, you mm. know, that's how kind of how I feel about music. It's like, we don't give a shit if you like it or not. It is what it is. So if you don't like it, don't listen to it. That's yep. how I feel about it. Anyway, I was listening to Noel Gallagher. He looks fabulous, by the way. He Friggin has got the he's, greatest hair. He's eight. Oh, the greatest that hair, hair in is rock and roll. Super. So cool. Oh, it is cool. And he looked he is great. Cool. He looked he great. He looked great. And he banged out the back half of the set. I was all just going to say again. So again, some of his. God, I hate it was to good. say it. The high flying birds. Some of it I really like. Oh, I love it. But some of it. It is a bit samey. And I think it's a bit dad rock. Well, Do you know what Liam Gallagher wrote? What? Because they don't like each other yeah, anymore. Yeah. Liam Gallagher went, very professional, but he's Barry Manilowed away since. Do you know yeah. what made me laugh? He's yeah. got a woman playing the fucking scissors. Did you see that? Now, was he taking the piss? No, because I heard an interview. Because that's a bit pretentious, isn't it? It, it? is. She's, you know, there was another woman on the stapler, did you see? <laughs> He's got a new orchestra based on Ram Ryman. I know. <laughs> he recruited, he found him in Ryman. Yeah. What are you doing, mate? Is that is that a laminator? He's on the guillotine. Do you, <laughs> do you fancy a gig, mate? You, yeah. You're playing that laminator better yeah. than anybody. Hey, can um, uh, guys, do you know anyone who plays the hole punch? Yeah. Great. I'm great. I'm my, but you do great, my, great, my, great, my, great hole punch here. Yeah. But she, oh, do you know God. what I mean? You've got a whole station. This is the brass section. Yeah. This is the woodwind. What's that section, mate? That's the stationary section. Yeah, exactly. What are they doing when they're not playing? They're knocking up some cracking arts and crafts, yeah, mate. Yeah, exactly. But she was playing the scissors. I mean, fuck it off. That's stupid. I mean, it did look daft. I mean, like, imagine being That's a... That's bullshit. I'm not having it. Yeah, imagine being Play a... an instrument, you musician, you turd. Imagine playing at Glastonbury. Yeah, and they're who going, thought that? Do you want a sound check? Yeah. yeah. Shh, shh. I mean, that sounds I'm sorry. Great, that. You can stick Do you know what scissors. it was like? Can I tell you what it made me look? I was watching that. Do you know what it was like? It was like when you were at school music class and you were so you shit. You ran out. They didn't the even give you the triangle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they just went, what can this person play? Yeah. Uh, I'd rather play that draw on the yeah, scissors. I'd rather play the spoons, I would, than that. Do you know what? Do you know what? He's <laughs> playing the spoons. Sod off. Scissors, Some, someone said ass. to me, I was gigging with Tom Davis at the weekend, and he sort of said, like, it, it, it was an act used to play the spoons, yeah, and they wouldn't let them into the venue because they thought they were shooting up heroin. Because <laughs> he was like, You're not bringing them spoons in here, yeah. I just play the spoons, I just have a lighter and a belt. For I'm not my having arm. it, just, I'm not having it. Um, do you know you what? You can keep that. Do you know what? When you were at school and you were in the thing, because it always used to be like the hierarchy, mm. big lad always got the drum, yeah, Fuck yeah, it's off yeah. the drum, I'm yeah. the drum. I'm the drummer. Macca's drummer was good, I have to say. Awesome. Awesome guy. Do you know which one I used to hate? Yeah. When, if you weren't fast to the instrument box, yeah. they were like, don't worry, Scott, you yeah. can play the fingers. And it was you just going. I know. And then yeah. I remember when she went, no, too loud, just one. Yeah, just one finger. And I was like, this is how shit it is. I'm down to one finger. You get quite a bit of purchase with three. I know, but that's clapping. Yeah. No one wants to clap through. So yeah. everyone else has got instruments. And can I'm you just click? clapping my way. I'm, I'm, listen to my click on my right finger. Yeah. That's great. Left, not good. <laughs> yeah. You do, Left's you, do bad. You, know you need to play. Scissors. I just want to say on, on the Macca thing, yeah. 80. Yes, Amazing. He, he could have done the Beatles numbers, but... Do you he know did what, do. Do you know what the ironic thing was? I was watching a man of 80 headline the biggest festival in the world. Yeah. And I'm 43. Yeah. And I couldn't... Stay awake to watch a man of 80. Yeah, I'd like, I know. That's how ironic yeah. it is. He's on stage at Glastonbury. I'm at 43 and I can't, Nodding off. I can't stay awake. Yeah. That's tragic. It is. It's truly tragic. But, but it was brilliant, wasn't it? But I loved as well how he gave a bit of backstory. I the did. Did you like that? Yeah. She was like, oh, of course, it was me and Jimmy, you know. And, oh, uh, so Jimmy good. Jimmy Hendrix, mate. And, uh, he did know, sound so Liverpool, you know, didn't he? Uh, Jimmy came up to me and he said, uh, you know... Um, you know, you use your whammy bar. And then I, I started, it went on for a while, that yeah, story. Yeah. But he was like, I, I think someone should have come up to him and gone, there's 200,000 people, mate, and you're telling a story about a whammy bar. Yeah, but it was brilliant. But then he just I went, loved it. It turns out in the end, you know, the reason he was using it was because he was out of tune. I said, hey, Jimmy, man, you're out yeah. of tune. Don't redo the, the whole story. But I, do you know what it did get me thinking? I'd love it if in comedy mm. I could give a backstory to a bit. 
Like, yeah. so I was just going to go. So uh, yeah, this next bit is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was a time when uh, uh, there was a lot of hair in the bathroom. And, uh, you know, hair in the bathroom. And I remember saying to Gemma, this is ridiculous. It's like being in a hairy coconut. And, uh, you know, the hair in the bathroom is always... Uh, and then just go into the bed. Yeah. It doesn't work with comedy. No, no, you know? it doesn't. And I said to Jimmy, there's too much hair in this bathroom, Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> and I know that was another comment that his voice had got weaker, but... He's 80. He's 80. What did he want from this? Have you seen 80-year-olds? Yeah. Have you seen an 80-year-old? Well... You see, going to Beeston today. What? You'll see them shuffling, yeah. broken. Yeah. They forget what they're doing. They, yeah. they, they can barely make it into Costa. The thing is, and he's right, doing Glastonbury. He's eight. The thing is, <laughs> him some there's a poem like... about getting old, and it says your voice becomes whistles and pipes. And I thought it was whistles. a perfect description of how your voice becomes yeah. weaker and like yeah. wispier and yeah, you know. It did, uh, but you know, I thought he did incredibly well. He did, and it also made me realise though, comedy and music are so different. Mm. Because like I, do you know? Sometimes I get a gig, and we were talking about this on Saturday. Mm. It's the definition of madness. What I'm doing is so self masochistic. Because what what you do as a comedian, like Macca, when he walked on stage, there's already love. Yeah. Because of the back catalogue. Yeah. There's already love because he's earned that respect. Yeah. With comedy, particularly if you're doing a club night, there's no credit in the bank. No. You start from scratch every time. Well, unless you're really famous. Yeah, you do, but that's quite hard to get mm. up till the run up. Because basically you want to go on and go, guys, I know you weren't in Bristol two nights ago, but they really loved me and mm. it went really well. So just bear that in mind. Yeah. Good evening. You know, yeah, it, yeah. it just doesn't there's no credit in the bank. No. But what constitutes bad crowd behaviour? When, when have you ever been in a crowd and you think, that's really Ooh, annoying? I, I was going to say... Um, you're not listening, you're on a different point. No, I'm not. I was going to It's it's kind of related to what you've just said, because I was saying to my dad, if you're in that crowd, there's no way you get into the toilet, so you're going to have to squat down and piss, aren't you? Piss in a bottle. No, but if you're a woman, you're going to have to just wee on the floor. Yeah. Because there's no way, if you're in the middle of that crowd, it's impossible. you can't get to a toilet. Well, well people get sunstroke, don't they, at Glastonbury? Because once you're at the stage, you're screwed. If you're going out, it'll take you 25, 30 minutes to get out. I mean, you must have to take loads of water in with take you. Take water. Shiwis. There's a lot of shiwis, isn't there? For what ladies. about if you needed a bob? Wow. Poo-poo. Either hold it or, you know. Because you can't get out, can you? You can't get out. I mean, I, I, What if you had the runs? You'd have to just poo yourself. <laughs> Sorry, Paul. I've shat myself and she loves you. Isn't it awful? It is a difficult one. I mean... That's it. That would be my only anxiety I've about... S- I've seen some weird crowd behaviour. I'm not a fan of the flags. I'm not a fan of the flags. I know. I, I know they're a big part of Glastonbury. I know. But imagine paying all that money. Yeah. There's Paul McCartney on stage yeah. and you're looking at, hey, Paul, it's Dave from Winchester. Say yeah. hello. I know. Put your fucking flag down, man. I know. Because I, I can't see Paul McCartney because of your flag. Yeah. And that, I think the flag... People on shoulders need to piss off. Yeah, I know. We don't want you on shoulders. It's really hard, isn't it? There should be some crowd decorum. Can I tell you the maddest thing I've ever seen Go at a on. gig? I was at Reading in 1996, 76. Yeah. And I was in the crowd and people, it's, it's, they're a bit better behaved now. They used to piss in the pint glasses and, and throw, throw it. And then throw it, I know. Uh, and I was down at front, he was watching the Beastie Boys. I'd hate that. That would really oh, annoy me. Because you know... When you it, know you've been wise. You know it's not rain. Yeah. It's that moment where you go, that was piss. That's not rain, that is it? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Keep your mouth shut, don't sink. Oh, God. <laughs> we'll always wear a hat. Um, but I remember, right, this is totally bizarre, but it happened, right? I was sat, still watching the Beastie Boys and we were, we were, we were, and this projectile came over and hit this girl next to me and it just exploded and it was all in her hair and her boyfriend Wass. was going no he was going what is it what is it do you know what it was mustard mustard someone had gone to the burger stand taken the mustard and just loved and it and thought that was a pre-planned thing thinking <laughs> imagine we're going dave look at this what are you done i'm gonna sling this mustard <laughs> just fucked a big gun. All in her blonde oh, hair. It must have stained her. So I think there's some idiots in those crowds. But you, you used to get as well people sitting down before the next band. Mm. So there'd like be a gap in the crowd and you'd go, like, you nearly tread on someone. Yeah, yeah. That moment where I've been in mosh pits before, yeah. uh, it is quite scary. Scary, but exhilarating as well. Mm. When I, the first band I ever saw was Offspring. 
1995. This is before they went massive. And I went with my mate Phil. We went to a Manchester Academy and we were right like three rows back. And I didn't even know what moshing was. I thought it was a riot. I shit myself when people were like bouncing around. Oh and, my God. And we were caught in the middle of it. Imagine two little. Ugh, oh my God. This is our first gig and our father's picking us up in a minute. Bloody we were only yeah. allowed to buy soft drinks. But yeah. You could have got absolutely got, like. Oh, but it was good. Yeah. And that when you get on the, when you get in the car on the way home. Yeah. And you can feel that cold because it's everyone's sweat driving. Uh, but you know, it feels like you've been through something. Yeah. You there's, a, there's a connection and yeah. an energy. Um, but I also as well is I, I was like I like watching the people coming onto stage. You know the people who are watching the bands behind them. Mm. Do you ever think as well what pre gig rituals they have? Who like people like I was told my mate Matt Bragg who supported me on tour in Bath yeah. at the Rondo Theatre. Great gig. Thanks to everyone who came. Lovely gig actually. Yeah. He was say he does camera work for festivals. Yeah. yeah. And he said sometimes like he he actually he does it for Liam Gallagher. Right. And he's yeah. not met him, but he's come very close. But yeah. he says, like, Liam will literally arrive six or seven minutes before he's due on. Yeah. So, it'll be, like, he doesn't want any preamble no. sitting about. He wants to just, be, like, and I always think that's a weird thing com uh, like performers do is want to maintain that energy. Mm. So, like, they go and, like, literally open the door straight onto stage. And he does that walk, that filmed walk yeah. and stuff. Do you know what I mean? Because there's a lot of, there's a one comedian that does that, just stays in the car right until the last minute. Yeah. I can kind of understand Because you though. don't want to lose that you don't get performance any, headspace. Well, you just don't get interrupted, do you? Lose your train of thought. Yeah. But here's one for you. If you could see, right, you can pick three bands that you've never seen. They can be dead or alive that you would, if you could choose three to see. Can, who you, would you, can you choose the era as well when they were particularly yeah, good? Yeah. Doddle. Go on then. Queen. Yeah, that was one of mine. Live Aid. Clean at Live Aid. Okay, right. Guns N' Roses in the late 80s. Mm, interesting. Just when everything was, before Axel went odd. Yeah. Before it all went to shit. Okay. The that Appetite been a good, for Destruction tour. That would have been a good gig. Yeah, even though you're yawning. So you right, you carry on. on there. Third one. Ah, this is a really difficult one. So I said Queen. I also said Fleetwood Mac. Yeah, and it'd have to be the heyday with like Rumors Lindsay Buckham in. Yeah, Rumors talk, but booking them. I used to say Jackson bad. That was my third Jackson. But now because I, and there's I was a bit of a weird thing. Yeah, going what down I was saying now. before before we knew he was a pedo. Is he though? Yeah, <laughs> he made people. He made lads suck him off in the shower. Yeah, that would definitely make you a pedo. Yeah, that would, so um, <laughs> I think I think that that would no, be. but I. Michael, that... But I was I such know. a big Jackson fan and I would choose Bad Tour. That's when I wish I'd seen him. Yeah? Bad Tour. Let me just tip that one for you. No, don't. Yeah. Bad Tour. Bad Tour, 19 what? 88. Yeah, it's when he was at his peak. I wish I'd have gone that. Yeah. I know, so they're my three. Yeah. And How I, about I, you? I, I mean, I'd love to have seen the Beatles, obviously. Mm, I think I think Queen would have been... Oh, Every person I've asked so far has said Queen. Because it's just... So that's amazing, Imagine isn't it? having to follow them. Imagine being the band following them. Someone you must have had follow to follow them. them. No, a, a live aid. Yeah, I know, had to follow I know, them. I know. Imagine them just going, oh, God. Bonjour, ça va? Bienvenue au petit test vocabulaire avec Scott Bennett. Has Pierre gone a bit jazz? No, it's cafe music. Sounds like he's gone a little bit free from French accordion, French romantic music. You're going to have to start that again now. Do you like that better? No, I'm not. Bonjour! Give him a bit, that's too hard to edit, just start again. Bonjour et bienvenue au petit test vocabulaire. <laughs> Should I just spam the phone? Try and edit that. I just, I just had a spasm. Just yeah, threw my phone in. A hand spasm. <laughs> Pierre. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, today, today's topic is Lenny. Oh, pfft. birthdays. I just gave away one of the answers, so I'm not going to just pretend you didn't hear that. So, numéro 1, it's to do with birthdays. So rickety is this feature. It's Just shut up, it's brilliant. Right, numéro 1, qu'est-ce que c'est le gâteau? 
Turn that down a bit. It's banging. Le gâteau. Cake. Cake. Well Easy. done. One, Easy. One on one. Numéro de Cadeau. Card. No. Present. Ah, you said card. It's present. So that's wrong. Card. One out of two. Numéro trois. Bougie. Bougie? Bougie. Balloon. No. Candle. <laughs> one out of three. Numéro quatre. Anniversaire. Birthday. Oh, well done. Two out of four. Numéro cinq. You're rattling through these. Yeah. You hate the features, so we're getting it done. I don't hate done. the features. You do? I don't. You hate the French. I don't hate the French. <laughs> <laughs> I like the French. <laughs> don't someone will clip that now. Oh. Make me look like a xenophobe. I didn't mean I you hate the, the people, the French. No. I meant you hate the French. I mean, I hate the Germans. I don't oh, hate no, the Germans. Oh, no, Germans. No, I like uh, them. No, I mean, um, you hate the section that I'm doing. I don't hate the section. Okay. And numéro cinq, <laughs> carte. Feels like you're doing it at gunpoint. Carte. Card. How many did you get right? Three. Three out of five. Rubbish. You're rubbish. But let's all sing happy birthday in French. Joyeux anniversaire. Joyeux anniversaire. Joyeux anniversaire. Joyeux anniversaire. Um, you have got a nice singing voice, haven't you? No. Thank you. <laughs> Au revoir. That's super fast. Too fast. Au revoir, Pierre. It wasn't too fast. What does Pierre look like? We well, can see him. He's sat over there. Have a look. I turned <laughs> my head as well. <laughs> <laughs> you, you did that. That was You're like such so, a knob. I'm such a prick. As if there's someone going to be yeah. there. I went. <laughs> <laughs> Made you look, you dirty look. I just went. Yeah. You are I such imagine a... Him. You're such a baguette. A baguette. <laughs> what are some French insults? That's what people really want to know. Come on. You must have I some. don't know any. You do? No, I don't. Shies of that. That's Meld. German. Meld. That's not an insult. I just mean shit. Meld la tête. Yeah. Shitted. That doesn't mean that, you absolute... You Come absolute... on, pick an insult. <laughs> pick one. I was going to call you a scrotum. <laughs> <laughs> you absolute scrotum. That's quite a good one, that. Yeah. No, if you've got no French insults. I'd like to be a band called Scrotum. Yeah. They'd be a rock band, wouldn't they? Yeah. Please welcome to, to the, the stage, stage. Scrotum. scrotum. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. With their new album, Vasectomy. Yeah. Mm, not sure about um, that. Gemma. Yeah. You don't know any French swear words. Yeah, I just told you a shit. Merde. That's it? Yeah. Do they not say fuck in French? En coulé, I think is... En coulé. Which I always think is like raspberry yeah. coulé. Yeah, it's not. So a raspberry fuck. We shouldn't be teaching swear words. That's Why? a bit naughty, That's isn't That's all it? people use the French dictionaries for. Mm. Don't you remember that? Yeah. Textbooks. I don't think there's anyone in there. No. You've looked. You've really looked. I've really looked. <laughs> Thank you for that, Gemma. I think, Merci. I don't know if... Are people picking up stuff from this? Are you questioning my section? I'm not. You get very aggressive when I question your section. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Don't question the section. Don't question the section. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So. I've got something to say. Go on. I saw this on Lad Bible this week yeah and i thought it was so lovely right. basically a guy called rob kenny he lives in america he's an american and <laughs> he set up um a youtube channel because he didn't have a dad growing up did you see this no and he set up a channel called dad how do i question mark for basically lads growing up without a dad wow and it's so cute and he's got literally millions of followers and it's so like it's the question, dad how do i shave dad how do i fix a shelf oh right dad, so it's the stuff that dads would yeah that you'd because he never had a dad growing up and it was all these little things that you know a dad would just take you to one side and and tell you how to do it and yeah i just thought it was so brilliant do you know what dad I, how do i do you know what what a genius idea it is clever i i worry about how useful i'm going to be to my daughters mm. when i get very older. very Little use. <laughs> well, you're not you're not practical. No, and, and, and you're I, not a DIYer. I can reboot the router. Oh, talking of dads doing jobs for you. Guess what, my dad said he'll do for us. What? He's going to. Um, I said to him, "Can I borrow your um, your Karcher power washer?" 
yeah. pressure washer yeah. again. And he says, you've never borrowed my pressure washer. And I says, Anta. And he says, no, you've never borrowed mine. You imagined it. Because I borrowed Uncle Les's, didn't I? Yeah. So I said, Everyone, all the dads have yeah. got pressure washers. So I says to him, they didn't borrow my pressure yeah. washer, So mate. I says to him, can I borrow your pressure washer? And he went, I'll do it for you. Do you know what, though? And I was like, do you, know, you like doing yeah. the pressure washer. Do you know what? Every ma- that, That's the thing. If so you, he's, if, he's, he's actually excited. Can I just say, every man... Loves mm-hmm. a leaf blower yeah. and a pressure washer. Oh, you've brought up something that I thought of the other day. What? What is the point of leaf blowers? There is no point. I've said this on stage. I've said it's just basically men with earphones I watched on. one the other day. Just noise. Just be- I watched him for about five minutes they because I thought, shit. I want to see if this is really worth it. it just, and it wasn't. They blow it into a pile, then they walk away. But he blew a bit and then it blew them out of the pile. So then he had to blow them back in the pile. <laughs> I was like... I don't see what you're do, doing do you here. Know they're playing God, mate. He's they're got petrol in his pack because it's a petrol in his pack. Yeah, yeah, petrol in his pack because it was a wireless one. Yeah. I was like, you're using energy to blow stuff. Imagine Greta Thunberg. From there to there. Imagine Greta Thunberg walking oh. past. She'd lose her shit. She'd be like, you're, you're pretending to be God. You, you're acting like the wind and you're burning fossil fuels to do it. It's madness. It's ridiculous. The other thing is, though, I've said this a million times. It's the machine aspect. It's got nothing to do with like blowing leaves. Your dad wants to think he's the Terminator. No, he, he wants, wants to think he's in Ghostbusters. He wants, to, <laughs> he wants to put a pack on. It's a proton pack. It's a proton pack of pressure washing. Yeah. And he wants to pressure washer that driveway. It is the only job a man mm. will approach with relish. Mm. They, would, they would like, ask him to fit a kitchen. Oh, no. It's a bit ask like him, firing a gun, isn't it? Got a wand. I've yeah. got fluid. Yeah. It's the most animalistic thing. Mm. You've got a gun in your hand and you've firing fluid yeah <laughs> it's, it's the amazing. most masculine thing i think men would happily like more men would do yeah. the hoovering yeah if there was a ride on dyson yeah if you said to them <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine yeah going around the house going yeah um can you whip round there with the Hoover? Oh, yeah. no, I can't. You can use the ride on. Yeah. I'm there, love. I'm there. Doing three-point turns in the... Ooh, there'd be no weaponized incompetence then. Do you know like, what I call the kids that I teach? What? The Dysons. Why? Because I make them pick all the bits up at the end of my class. Fucking that's funny. I was like, right, Do you make come on, s- Dysons. <laughs> no, because I, I drop loads of like, sparkly bits Dysons. on the carpet and I'm like, pick all the bits up. Oh, that's torturous. It's not. Yeah, but I, I do think with the pressure washer thing... Mm. Lots of men, like, I reckon if you la- left a man, mm. he'd pressure washer the drive, gradually then he'd work his way around the pavements. It'd be pressure washing... He'd love it. Pressure washing, like, chewing gum. Yeah. I reckon they wouldn't even realise, and no. before they know it, they've pressure washed the entire town. Yeah. I reckon if you if you actually led, like, the Pied Piper, yeah. there'd just be a load of blokes on a yeah. Sunday in shorts, yeah. just pressure washing yeah. all the way to John O'Groats. I've got to say, though, it's <laughs> one of the I mean? most satisfying jobs I've ever done. It is. And that's why I like hoovering. I like mowing. I don't do it because you tend to be mow. Yeah. You have I a mow. mow. I like anything where you can see the instant impact yeah. of what you're doing. Yeah. That's why I quite like decorating because you do see the, the yeah. results. Yeah. Um, I don't like gardening. It's fucking boring. And I the love pay- gardening. Oh, the payoff's going to be in six months. Who gives a shit? No, I disagree. No. Gardening's So wonderful. your dad's going to pressure washer, is he? Yeah. Do you know, one of the best, I mean. It's either because he wants to do it or he don't want me to borrow it. I think it's both. 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 I'm not just in it with that. No. Uh, have you ever have you been to pressure washer school? Have you been to have you had a pressure washer apprenticeship? No. No. I'm afraid you can't. I have done it. a driveway before. Until I see your pressure washer license. Yeah. You can sod off. You can piss off, mate. I, it did make me think though, you know, we talked about that cafe last week and you said about that girl who was picking up dog shit. Yes. And you said yes. that's an horrible. Yeah. He didn't. I, I never had a reply from that email. No, they were too busy picking up dogs. That's shit. not good, is it's it? Not good. Don't go again. Um, I I remember some of the worst Saturday jobs. Mm. I remember when I was landscape gardening, and I had like I had to do this chemical thing. Mm. So it was like pressure washing, but you'd go round the bottom of trees, mm. and we're talking miles. Be at the side of the motorway, mm. and I had this pack on. They wouldn't do it now. It weighed a ton, and the only way I could stop it weighing was to work faster. So that. You know, Unbelievable. was there any Saturday jobs that you, you used to wash someone's hair? Yeah. You said I the scalp. No, there was one woman who had a bumpy scalp. Oh, it's like the great. witches, isn't it? In fact, I, I've, I don't know if you know this, but last night I did Grace's hair up the road, our babysitter, because she's got prom on Wednesday. Yeah. So I'm doing her prom hair for her. So oh, we, you do? Hey. Yeah, I did. I put her hair Can up. I just say, mm. by the way, to people out there, 
I'm sure this is not normal, that Gemma can just turn her hand to certain things. You can just cut air. Where did that come in? I don't just, I can't just cut air. I've, I've practiced it. But you're it not trained. No, I know, but. How did you know how to do it? Because it actually... I worked in a hairdresser's. My mum was a hairdresser. So I watched them doing it. You see, I cannot get my head around being left responsible. If I did it, it would mm. be like the way, like, it would be literally pudding bowl. It'd look so shit. Don't you think so, you could, you no. know, if you were instructed how no. to do it? Don't Have you, you seen me wrapping presents? Yeah, you're rubbish at that. That's they look, that's they, surprising for somebody so artistic. I can do art to a certain... I'm very good at drawing. I'm very good at creating. Mm. But my God, my presents look like fish and chips. That's really strange. And I just... Hair is a big responsibility. I must admit, letting it someone, is a big responsibility. Well, you're letting someone go on their heads. On well, photographs, they're going to have forever. Well, that's too much pressure for me. We were saying, actually, last night, because I was talking to Jane and Grace about it, and we are like... To be a hairdresser, you can't just have an interest in hair. You actually have got to have artistic talent. You've got to see it in 3D. Flair. You've got to have flair for the hair. Flair for You've the hair. You've got to have hair flair. You've got to have hair flair. You've got to care. You've got About to flair the for the hair. You've got yeah. to care. Yeah. You know, you can't... Hair, flair and care. Yeah. And you'd... Hair. Yeah, otherwise, you yeah. know, mm. you've got to have flair. You need a chair. You've got to care. About hair. You've got to put them in a chair. <laughs> oh, come on, keep, come on, come on, Jen, keep going. And... You shouldn't be bare. <laughs> At least from the bottom down. Yeah. Um, and um, you've got to be fair. And don't have a mare. And don't have a mare. <laughs> do you know? And then when you... But, what, what, this is... Come on. One more. We're at the end of this. No, we aren't. Yeah. They're shouting. It's over. People are shouting no. at us. And, um, and if it goes badly, ooh. people will stare. You might need a layer Why? in your hair. Because you cut layers in, don't you? That's layer. the point it needs to end. That okay, sorry. You know, right. awful point. I had a car, I went in a car share. Very rare I do this. Share. Share. Oh, right, go on, sorry. Car uh, share. I went to a gig mm. at an RAF base. Yeah. It was good. Yeah. I've done it before. Uh, Dave Longley. Yeah. You like Dave, don't you? I love Dave. I love his podcast. Yeah. He's, he's not done it for ages. No, he's great. So funny. He's, he's the most, un- he's most different person till visually. Mm. Like he looks like he's massive. Yeah. He's ripped. Yeah. Bodybuilder. Yeah. Quite intimidating. But he's completely opposite in yeah. when you talk to him. Yeah. What do you think are good car sharing habits? What do you think makes a good car sharing partner? Well, clean. No, no, being a good car share partner. Um, to what enjoy you... silence. Exactly. I think you have to have a moment where you listen to the hum of the road. Yeah. Where you don't feel like you're just going, I don't... I, what are you doing on Wednesday? I don't think what are you doing up there? I don't think you'd be any good at that. Well, here is the surprise, lady. What? Because I'm very good at car share. Why? Because I, I go into a different Sorry, I've Scotty. Just got to, I've just got to itch me. Uh, fucking hell, I'm watching her here trying to get tune in the radio station. God, that's right in. Can we get her a... <laughs> Good God. Do you want a leaf blower? I might as well get Gemma's... <laughs> this is the most... Un... Just Have we got this? Just look, have we got this on the camera? What is this? <laughs> Gemma you just cleaning it. Don't you? That's too It's hay fever. That's not worked. It's hay fever. It you itches. were right in there. That was like eight minutes. <laughs> Can you cut that? No. <laughs> she was cleaning a finger in her ear. No. Like she was trying to no, tune I was in. Itching my ear. It looked. It made me uncomfortable. And you're blinking now. It's a. <laughs> she's itched that deep. It's moved her eyeball. <laughs> you was coming out the other <laughs> side. <laughs> the fuck I couldn't I, stop. Imagine me yeah. trying to do a podcast. <laughs> this is what I'm doing. No, carry on talking. No, I'm listening. I'm listening even better, actually. <laughs> it was really itchy. <laughs> <laughs> stop it. Is it quite Stop being a dick. Gasmic. Oh, I'm the dick now, am I? <laughs> I'm the dick now. Um, anyway. It was really itchy. Can I share it? I actually, you don't know this. I think I've got a section of Scotty that I access. If I'm with someone... You withhold from me. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, like, if I'm in a situation, like, say I'm on, I'm in a, a gig and I'm with three comics mm. and two of them don't get on with each other yeah. and it's tense, yeah. I'm able to access a mode of Scotty, which is like Dad Scotty, yeah. where I become really placid and I become the middleman. And it, it's perfect. I just become the the drifting do you know what I mean I can yeah. exist in that tension mm. and I think the same with the car share as soon as I get in a car share I think I feel 
you don't want me wanging on. Yeah. And I'm able to access that, regulate my outbursts. Mm. So that's the first thing. Any other criteria you think? Um, so, yeah, I think it's good to be able to be silent. It's yeah. good to have a tin of sweets. Sweets is always good. Bringing some sweets along. What sweets would you bring for a cash share? Anything. Never chocolate. Chocolate's madness. Mm. I would. I, I think a boiled sweet is always preferable. Or a wine gum. But the, maybe not opal fruits, because then there's nothing more homoerotic than having <laughs> to unwrap a sweet for the driver and pop, and pop it, it in. in. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Imagine me just popping yeah. that along his mouth. Yeah. Here comes the train into the tunnel, David. So what would you say? Pop it. Oh, that's a strawberry. Just it's in the mouth. Uh, oh, you kiss my finger. Oh, should we pull over? There's a lay-by. What? Stop staring at me. That wasn't funny. It was funny. No, it wasn't. Right, go on then. Um, I think as well that as a good car share, you have to sort of listen more than talk. Um, but also as well, I always like to start with when we get home, work out the mileage, tell me how much it is and I'll back you. Get that good. out of the way. Straight good. away. Good. Petrol. Get that out of the way. Yeah. There's nothing worse than driving along yeah. thinking, this bastard's this not paying. This not going to contribute. Yeah. And then they get there and then they get the bag out the back mm. and you go, all right, everything okay? And they go, yep, yeah, and I've had it. I'm not going to name names. Right, so yeah, great. Yeah, thanks for driving, mate. Next sentence should be, "Yeah, how much do I owe you for fuel? After thanks for driving, not thanks for driving, see you. Yeah. I literally want to take the car, drive through their front room, (laughs) into the front room and go, are you forgetting something? Yeah. Eh? Yeah. 20 quid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Petrol? Yeah. We haven't got here on unicorn juice, you fucking freeloading <laughs> prick. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Okay, yeah. I'm not your driver, yeah. mate. What about, would you be accepting of the, I'll do the next one? No. Because that's not going to happen, no, is it? that's never, that's not how it works. No. We're not, we're not lifts for lifts. No. This isn't Anderson Lee cars, mate. No, this no. isn't, this is my livelihood. Yeah, eh? yeah. Always start, and I said to Longley, I said, work out how much it is, and never, ever, never question what they say. No. If he says... 15 quid, 15 quid. Yeah. You know, you don't turn around and no. go, is it though, can I give you a 10? No, no. never that. That's the car share etiquette. Also, the other thing that stresses me sometimes about car share, and I've been in this situation, yeah. going to pick someone up and having a breaking wind. Oh, before God. Before you pick them up. And that moment where you're getting all the windows down, you're trying to get rid of it, because you just don't want them to come in and have that latency of a little bit of a... Oh, no. When they sit in your but car for happens, the first time. What happens if and you then need to break wind when you're in? And they go... Yeah. What happens if you need to break wind while they're in? Uh, very, very simple. What you do is you get them to hold the wheel, like you're in a, a, a cop buddy yeah. movie, and you just fire out the window. <laughs> now, oh, God. the other thing is I give the car a clean. Yeah. The amount of people, when they pick you up and they go, sorry, the car's a little bit of a state, and you think in yourself, you think it'll just be a couple of crumbs, yeah. and you get in it and you go, I feel like I'm sat. At the, at the tip yeah. it's this skip number seven with wheels oh, mate my God. I need I need injections can I, can I take you anywhere after yeah can you take me to the walking centre so I can update my fucking tetanus because <laughs> I've been literally <laughs> sat yeah. on yeah. your land I've sat on your landfill for yeah. two hours there's stuff I, I don't even noticed that I've couldn't fully relax did you notice when I was perching when I'm perching like I'm on the yeah. like I'm on a pew at yeah. church and I'm not religious do you know that sort of mm. I was pew do you want to? Do you want anything? You were perching. I was perching, and then you literally can you? I don't even wear a seatbelt, mate, because I I'm scared of it. Yeah. So they're the they're the rules, and I think that's the the car share etiquette. Also, as well is now there's sat nav. You used to be on map duty, but now mm. there's a sat nav. There's no need to do no. that. But I think there's like you just have to be the ultimate. Just I don't work, be a dick. Basically, I work really hard at being the ultimate passenger, and I also think about interesting things to say. Do you know what I mean? I don't like pressure for conversation. That's a bit... No, you let it flow. But let com- it flow. Comedians have always got conversation. I suppose what's the number so. one topic of conversation? What do we do? we in a car? No. You slag off comedians you're jealous of. <laughs> <laughs> and that is hours. Hours of that it's shit. It's basically... Like, hours of that what, shit. What's real, there's nothing better as a comedian to be really pleasant to someone the night before yeah. that you've gigged and then you get in a car show and you go, I'm going to destroy them now. Yeah. We're all bitches. We're horrible. Mate, you're not no, though. I'm not a bitch actually. I'm very measured, um, but it did. It did. Um, In fact, I never hear you slag anyone off. No, because I don't think it's worth it. No, I think you'll always. Can I also tell you, mm. the comedy circuit is a colander. Mm. Nothing's ever sacred. No. It all gets back. What's said People on have the probably car slagged share me stays off, on the car share. Yeah, but no, it doesn't. No, I know. It literally doesn't. Especially 
Because if you tell me I do ring the sun. <laughs> I've got a hot scoop. Yeah. Well, I do. Yeah. Hello, is that Daily Mail? Do you think about all the people I've worked with, though? I know. You could say some right old shit. It's all trust-based. Aye. And that's, aye. that's the. I think that's a really good thing mm. to... Don't tell them what I told you as well. You slagged me off some at rock. <laughs> You're coating me off down Coffee Club. Ah. Those people down there, if we have, if I haven't made it massive, yeah. they have got some proper ammunition. Yeah, ammunition. Ammunition. And the no, mission. because they'd be like, have you, he's got his new series, yes, but... But uh, he leaves skid marks on the bed sheets. <laughs> <laughs> Your face! Your do you know why? Then. Do you know why you I panicked? Do you know why I panicked? Then. Why? Because I think it is a possibility. <laughs> I genuinely think. Your face. I think. I think there's actually been a time Scott, where that's <laughs> happened. Because you know when you come in from a gig. Because I get sometimes. Can I just tell you something? Scott, I'm dying here. What? I'm absolutely dying. You've picked something that could be true. I'm going to go and check the bloody bed sheets. No, now, no. you look guilty as a puppy no, next to fine. a pile of poo. No, they're fine. It's okay. just, I had, a late, I had a late night Snickers. <laughs> I had to eat Snickers. Do you know what it is? Sometimes, and this is, uh, sorry if people are having their breakfast, my pre-gig ritual is just shitting yeah. for hours, oh, just the God. adrenaline. And then sometimes when I get back in and I get mm. into bed, I have an itchy bum. Oh, no. And I always worry that I've itched myself subconsciously in the night. Oh, no. Sometimes I have to get up. Can you not just wash your ass before you get into bed? That would be the sensible thing. <laughs> <laughs> but why I do, can't believe why do, we're talking why, about why this. Why wash my ass when we've got good Dunelm linen? <laughs> Oh God! Do you know what? Though sometimes we hit a new low this week. Do you know sometimes I have to get up and and wipe my bottom again. Wash it, <laughs> <laughs> guys! You're gonna have to cut this whole section. It's oh, awful. Oh, People God. think you don't wash your ass. This is all. <laughs> I do. I wash it on Wednesdays. I wash it on a Wednesday. Scott, this is a dreadful, dreadful conversation. Okay, so thank you to everyone that's written in. People do write in. I know you Bpod at gmail.com. It's a lovely and thing. And it's a lovely thing. Um, do you know the biggest thing that people have written in about? Go on. Uh, I know what you're going to say. Mm, last week we talked about you going through the menopause. Yeah. Uh, or the perimenopause. Yeah. And people spat their tea out yeah. at the line because you said you know it's affected you because your libido drops. Yeah. So uh, you said sometimes, you know, you don't even fancy having a bit of self time. Yeah. You would rather just make a coffee. And yeah. I said, I think the rule of thumb is if you would rather roast the bean than flick it, yes. you're probably going through the change. Yeah. And people have written in saying they've gone nuts for that they went, one. They've gone nuts for that joke. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's quite catchy. I think you should write to, is there a menopause society? Is there? Support no, I, but I will say, because I've had quite... Because you could have the menopause. Yeah. You'd rather roast the bean than flick it. Yeah, and then, yeah. exactly. But I, I, I've i had a few women contact us this week. There has been a few. Um, basically talking about their own experiences and that they've not always had a great response from their GPs. Now, we know for a fact that the response you can get from GPs is varied because the the the, the menopause, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Well, the, I can't think of my words. That's also a, 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 <laughs> That's a symptom method, of the menopause. perimenopause. <laughs> yeah, um, basically the service that you get in or the information that you get in is so yeah. varied because... The training for GPs isn't can I, universal, is can it? Can I be controversial? Across the board. Go on. Is it worse when you've got a male GP? I don't think always, but inevitably, inevitably. It's like if you go to, if you're a drug addict and you've got a counsellor, if they haven't come off a drug themselves, they're not going to have the same level of empathy as somebody who has been a drug addict so, so therefore i do think if you are talking to a woman who's been through the menopause or is going through it or is perimenopausal they're bound to have a little bit more insight into what you are experiencing as a patient do you know what i think the answer is go on. i think we need to make men go through the menopause i think that would be a mistake and then there'd be a bit more but do you know what they'd be doing mm. do you know how men would respond yeah he's been out there with his pressure washer yeah. for a month yeah you know? 
He's trying to pressure wash it away, the menopause. Yeah, exactly. His leaf blower. Well, the thing I'm is... Saying, Do you know what, Julie? I keep getting hot flushes. I'm using the leaf blower on myself. Yeah, exactly. Don't do it. But do the it. thing is, the thing is, it's... Um, I think it's... It is frustrating that mixed messages are happening around the country in terms of what people are being told by their doctors. But I think um, I would highly recommend following my doctor on instagram her name's dr alice duffy yeah and she works for health in menopause and that's her practice and she is absolutely amazing she's just i find her quite inspiring actually and i know that she does a lot of work with gps and then of course all the davina mccall program yeah and it is dr becoming, louise i can't remember what her name was the doctor that it's worked becoming with her. a bit zeitgeisty because it's been an in, it's been something that people don't talk about even like back in like when you had um oh what was it was it les dawson used yeah. to go she's going through the change. yeah the change. the change yeah and even back then there was yeah. a stigma to it yeah it's like the, the only a comparable thing for men is men's mm. mental health Yes. It's like you've got the two yeah. unsaid things. And mm. I think we need to just be like, they should be doing it in sex education at schools and stuff, going, this is a long way off, but this is what's going to happen. Yeah, I do think it. it should be mentioned, because it actually. Should, it should be mentioned. Because I reckon there's probably a lot of, you know, as a man, I realise I'm not qualified to talk about this at all, but um, there must be a lot of mental health and moments in a woman's life that are related to the menopause that people don't, say are the relentless yeah menopause. yeah or they might you, not recognize yeah, it yeah because if your hormones are changing yeah i just think that we need to now if anything this world is a, an absolute bin fire sometimes mm. it's a shit tip sometimes mm. and like th th where we've got to with a lot of things i mm. don't agree with but what i do agree with is people talk about stuff now mm. without any stigma mm. and i think that's one thing we should be talking about yeah now. the fact that you talk to me about it and you talk about it on this podcast is great because mm. i think there's a lot of we've had a lot of messages about mm. this mm. and i think there's like people don't want to talk about it because there's still that weird thing don't you think that one when a woman's too old is that there's that sort of weird stigma of oh she's you're over she's the hill gone kind out of thing. to seed you're over the yeah. hill you're not desirable and it's it's absolute nonsense well, it's also as and well... it's terrifying. I think after the second Davina programme, there was also a bit of a backlash, like people basically saying, you know, there's now a sort of fashion that you've got to label yourself with menopause or perimenopause and you you might be taking treatment that you don't actually need and da 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 But I think, I still think there's no harm in... The fact is that all of us, all women, will be having changes in their hormone levels at some point mm. or constantly... And that inevitably, yeah, there'll be different ranges of symptoms and to different extremes and different levels. But the chances are that it will be affecting you in some way. And that there is a lot that can be done. Yeah. And you don't need to suffer. And there's, and also there's massive miscommunication on the dangers. We've, I don't want this to turn into a podcast about menopause. but It's becoming the menopause but there's, podcast. You know, I would always just say just... There's loads of stuff you can read up on yourselves. Just mm. Google it. And there's so much information out there now. You see, we so can be daft. Wish. We can talk about you doing that with your ears. We can talk about me wiping That's my ass effect. on bed shits. That's bed symptom. shits. Bed shits. <laughs> bed shits. Yeah. And then we go into the menopause. This podcast is nothing if not versatile. Yes. We, we basically, guys, and there's no one from the BBC ever going to listen to this, but if you want new one show hosts, we're doing it. <clears> we are <throat> nailing it. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've got a bit of a frog in the old throat. And so's Bob. Are you, I know. Oh, God. I don't know what's going to be left. I don't know what's going to be left. Bum, 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 bum. Dead frogs on the lawn caused by a man. <laughs> this week's mundane task is cleaning the fridge. Oh, God, shoot me now. Do you know what? Can I just say? Have you ever cleaned the fridge? Pertinent, this one. Do you know why this is pertinent? Why? What did you buy in Lidl last oh, week? Now, this, what this is sometimes... To make. What a mistake to make. I love you so much. You know this. But sometimes you make the most basic errors. Gemma, what did you buy on Impulse? I'll tell you what happened. No, it wasn't Impulse. It was a plan. And the plan... Has gone to shit. Because what happened was on Friday night, I was invited to friends for dinner. So my dinner that I'd bought on the Thursday 
wasn't needed anymore. And yep. then it keeps getting pushed on and pushed but on. what had you bought? So you I, bought the worst thing. No, I bought... It wasn't the worst thing. I bought cod loins, right? Fresh fish. fish, fresh fish. But what I didn't realise was there was a slight little leak in the packet. Uh. So I put it in a, a cloth um, shopping bag. Um, I bought it with some Mediterranean vegetables. I was going to do like almost like a Mediterranean with sort of sautéed do, do, potato dauphinoise on top or something, you know, like a... Yeah. A modern fish pie, if if you will. Mm. Um, and um, it leaked fish juice on my car seat. It's, she smelled like Captain's Bird. <laughs> oh, God. I, I, it's like a fishing troll. I smelled some, like, do you know I don't what, know what, do you know it when I knew, You knew you'd done that. When you were driving up the driveway yeah. and the seagulls were following yeah. you. <laughs> and the heat, the heat last week. And on actually, the hottest day of the year, Gemma brought fish home. And the thing is, I... I I didn't even know that the fish juice had spilled yeah. until about two hours later okay. when I worked out why the the shopping bag was wet. I was oh, like, oh, fish wet. Because wet I bought fish. some ice cream as well and I thought it was just a bit of, you know, like ice. Condensation. Yeah. And, and then I was like, I sniffed the bag and I was oh. like, oh my oh. God. So then I went back out to the seat, but it was too late. It's soaked into it's the It's grim. Seat. I'm sorry, that is grim. And then... And so then you've put it in the fridge. And now it's been in the fridge for three days and it's a bit fishy. The fridge stinks. Anyway, you're hijacking my mundane task No, here. but I'm saying it relates to the... We, are we going to have to bin that fish? I think we can eat it today. Let's eat it today. I'm going to make it for lunch. No, right? we're going out. We're off to... The, we're going to have it for tea. All right, tea. We'll have it tea. But the thing but, is, the thing is, what I'm saying to you is... Go on. That's one of my pet hates about the fridge. Go on, lad. Is when you've got an over... <laughs> go on, lad. Go on, lad. Tell you, us. You tell him. You tell him, son. When you've got an overpowering smell in there, something yeah. like if you've got leftover fish or you've got like tuna or you've got... What's other thing that stinks in there? That You've got a whiffy cheese or yeah, something. Yeah, whiffy cheese. And you put it in... It, it just... It's like, it's I like, love cheese, No, though. but it's like chucking anthrax in there. Every yeah. time you open that fridge, yeah. you're... Oh, yeah, you're yeah. gagging. Mm. I, I think going through the fridge and mm. getting rid of stuff yeah. is a is a ball ache. Yeah. It is a, and you, when I worked at Hot Point, yeah. we had an idea for yeah. a fridge. Yeah. And I, don't, I think they probably exist. Oh, okay. That I've got something you, else to say you, in a minute. As you loaded it, yeah. it scanned it. Yeah. And it scanned it into a barcode yeah. so you could circulate. But then actually what you did realise is what sort of psychopath yeah. has got the time to go, oh, it's Wednesday, Malcolm. Yeah. It's time for fridge audit. Yeah. Those people are sad bastards no, and they don't not. exist. They're not. No, but no one's got the time to do these things. These things are nice ideas on the concept board. The thing but is, they never work. Right. But let me just tell you, there is nothing more pleasurable than opening a fridge that's well organised and clean. I hate a dirty fridge. And nobody enjoys cleaning out their fridge. Can I just make that absolutely clear? It's minging. And I hate it that um, before a shop arrives or before I go shopping, I always try and clean the fridge. You purge it ready for the new. Yeah, so you get rid of any shit that's left over that's not been eaten. Do you know what? Which I... is very, I'm, I'm trying to be better with that. I'm trying to not waste food. You are better. We are, I think we've been better recently. I think we have. But I tell you, you know what I don't like in the salad Go on. crisper? Is that one little wee carrot that's all shriveled like a shriveled dick? Get rid of it. <laughs> Just get, rolling round. Get doing. Sad carrot. He's gone. And he's looking at you going, I've been here since January. I know. Yeah, but we don't have that. Mm. Not having that. But yeah, and what I tend to find works well with fridge cleaning is I have a bit of Dettol, a bit of the old it's spray, a Dettol. get a bit of the old kitchen towel, have a whip round with that. It collects up any dirt, any sticky bits in the trays. Yeah. Um, I do like to get my veg box out, wash it with soapy water. I'll give you, you, always, um, you always love to jet wash your veg box. I do. <laughs> And, oh, um, you've got a lovely spotless veg box, you. And it's lovely. That's why I fell in love with you for your veg box. Yeah, and it's lovely to get it all organised. Get your salad crisper out. Get your fridge organised. Mm. But yeah, so there Where you go. Where do you stand on egg racks? They're a weird thing, aren't they? Well, because I found, and I will put it onto Instagram to let everybody share in my... Because I have got an Instagram account called Charity Shop Warrior, <laughs> right? Shut your noise. Sadness. I love charity shops. I bloody love it. And um, I found, of course, because of the French connection with me, I found a um, an egg box that's made of wood. It's obviously from a French farm because it says... Is um, it? Fuck. It is. It is not. Do you know where it's, it's from? It's from, a, it's from a factory in Hull. 
No. That they've burnt no, it, it into it. No, it says farmers. And selling all that shit no, to you. No, it's an original egg box from France. Bell ends. No, it isn't. It's original. It's an original egg box and from it says, Wigan. And it says six... French egg box from Wigan. Six, uh, three, six fresh eggs. They're so, spelt bonjour And of course, wrong. in a supermarket, eggs are never kept in a fridge, are they? No. But folk always seem to think they've got to keep them in the fridge. Same with tomatoes. So I always keep our eggs out and they're in my beautiful French... Um, egg box from the charity shop. Hey, Gemma, Gemma. So I shall send you all a picture of that. You can find some absolute beauties what? on um, in your charity shops. You like to get your eggs out, don't you? I like my eggs out. To show that you're fertile. Yeah. I've still got eggs. No, no, I just I've like them outside. So there you go. <clears throat> so, so what's well the technique? Done. You get everything out, cloth, dettol, wipe it all It's around. just annoying because what it is, it's a job that, you know, we all have to buy food. We have to put food in the fridge. Mm. And it's a job that is triggered by doing that. So you're like, oh, not only have I got to go and do the shopping and put it all away, <laughs> but I've got to clean my goddamn fridge before. Can I raise you one one job that's slightly worse? Defrost in the freezer. Fucking hell. I know. It's hell. That freezer we used I to use have. I use a hairdryer. Was, it got to the point. You know that bit like in... Um, frost free, my ass. They're never frost free. They're liars. You they know that lie. bit? You know like that bit on that film where um, they end up under that avalanche? Alive? Is it alive? No, what film is it when they have the avalanche? Verti- oh, okay. I don't know. Anyway, it's like a film. You know when you see the snow just building on snow? Yeah. I sometimes... I remember opening our freezer sometimes yeah. and there was like... It was just all snow and then one fish finger. I must admit, it's the closest I get to feeling like I'm climbing up the eye because Yeah, chiseling I, it. Yeah, off. chiseling it. I really do feel like... Pass me the crampons. Yeah, exactly. I can't get towards the potato waffles. Exactly. And you sort of chiseling. It does feel like that. And then, do you know what the worst thing is? Is you always find them like, there's always a pea at the back. Oh, there's always a pea. Always peas. a pea. Peas from the millennium. Yeah. It's grim. I think defrosting the freezers. And then we have to do that freezer eat down. Yeah. Do you remember? Then you have to yeah. start having some weird ass meals. But also, like, like Heston Blumenthal's in there going, yeah. What are we doing? We're on a freeze readout. What are we having for tea? Well, we're having Finder's crispy pancakes, potato waffles, falafel, and we're having cod and butter sauce on top. It's a yeah. bit weird. We've got to eat it all yeah. tonight. That's it. You just smash it. But I'm really trying, ever since we had the kitchen done, I'm really making an effort to not overbuy stuff in the, the freezer. The freezer's lightly loaded. He's lean and Mean. He's lean and mean, defrosting machine. He is. Also, I had an idea. Um, it came to me in a flash yesterday, and I mm. thought I would like to put this to the dragon's den. Right. Well, we, we need to say, i.e., you need to say the listeners of the podcast. Well, you need to say this is patented. It is now one ten. 27th, 6, 22. I'm glad you did that because I do think if somebody gets whiff of this, they could be onto something. Is it your fish whiff? No, it's called, I'm calling it the temporary kitchen. So basically, if you're having an extension, yeah. you hire the temporary kitchen for the duration of your extension. It's brought to you on a trailer and it's like uh, on wheels. Mm-hmm. It's the size of, say... Flat um, pack. No, 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 no. It comes on wheels. So you wheel it into your... Like wherever a shipping you, container. Wherever you want it. No, 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 no. It's like the size of like... No, 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 no. I love you No, 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 no. It's the size of like um, a 900 mil kitchen cabinet. Right. But it's tall as well. So in it is a small microwave. You just plug in the whole unit into a plug socket, which activates... Got you a can sink then, on top? No sink. Now you need a sink. No, the sink need- is... No, the sink is the, the area that's difficult to manage because if you're having your kitchen ripped out you might not be able to plumb in water into the temporary kitchen you could have a temporary water source though off your um hose pipe outside you need a sink you can't have a temporary kitchen without a sink it's madness well we'll need to work on that bit but anyway then <laughs> you let's have, have a brainstorm this afternoon it has um a fold out flap out work surface yeah it's got a cupboard that I'll has in it four plates, four bowls, four side plates. It has a small cutlery drawer. Preparation um, area. It has then a cupboard at the side of that where you've got storage for the food that you buy. Because Basically, it's a bit of a caravan. It, yeah, it's like it's, it's a temporary kitchen that you wheel into your house so that you can basically, if you're having an extension, you can box up everything you own. Because what we found was the trouble when we were having the extension is you're ferreting around for little bits, odds and sods. 
and you you know you don't know where this is you don't know where that is oh i didn't keep that out i should have mm. kept that bit out well i remember i've got, got no clean work surface to work off i've got nowhere to store my food because there's no cupboards it's a nightmare so the temporary kitchen you say hire it for like 30 quid for the duration of your or 50 quid for the duration of your extension and it's just like a, and then you just come and collect it when you're done can i give you my dragon's den response are you out no i like it i like it i like it i'm in I'm in. I'm going to give you the one. I like you. You're a nice, pretty, 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 pretty kitchen person. Thank you. That's the up Yeah. Um, can I just say yeah. what's really freaky about this? Yeah. When I was a product designer yeah. at a consultancy, yeah. I designed a temporary shower mm. for people who were having, having the bathroom, bathroom done. done. And it was a pop-up like shower. Right. And it connected to your host pipe. Right. And it was, it was a bit silly idea, never yeah. got off the ground, but it was outside. Yeah. And you would, I can get hot water through it, I right. like a heating element in it. Right. So that when you could at least go out and have yeah. a shower yeah. outside. Right. You know. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? And, it I, is... and I, I knew people who designed a portable one for festivals, yeah. which is mad because yeah. you can't be like at Glastonbury going, we've got everything, yeah. we've got the bags, we've got the yeah. airbed, we've got the yeah. shower, David. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but what you're saying isn't a bad idea. Mm. The pr- Yeah, it is. I mean, I, I'll, I'll give you 5% for 500 yeah. grand for 5%. No, yeah. it's, it's actually quite a good idea, a temporary mm. kitchen. But when you think about it, our builder put that sink in. He had a spare sink, didn't he? Mm. Straight away. Yeah. It's not really... I don't think anybody would be asked with it, Most people just prepare on top and of the fridge. And they'd all be like, we're so skinny, we can't be paying can't 50 be paying... quid out for a temporary kitchen. Well, it's kitchen. not going to be 50 quid. It'd be like 150 quid for a temporary kitchen. Where yeah. are you going to store it? It's a shit idea. Where are you going to put it? It's a shit idea. You're going to be outside just cooking in the rain. Daddy's doing just an omelette in torrential rain. Just a minute. Let me just call my lawyer. Hello? All yeah. right. Can you cancel the temporary kitchen um, patents? Consider it done. It was a shite idea. Yeah. Thank you, bye. We haven't had so much. <laughs> this is the worst idea since Bollocks. your mobile toilet. <laughs> anyway, whatever. Um, so. Whatever. I think, I think that's... I think we're drawing the end. The end. We're, 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 we're drawing the end. Drawing to the end of we're the coming podcast. coming to a close. So, you have been listening to a Bennett production. Well, you've missed a bit there. What? Before the wind-up... We have to do the relentless plug. Okay, so please go to Acast um, People's Listeners Choice Award and vote for I Brew with the had, Bennett. I thought you had it. Yeah, if you go to the Listeners Choice Acast Podcast Awards, and, and if you won't mind giving us. it a little share and asking anybody who, even if they don't listen to this podcast, just say, yeah. please, can you vote for just, them? Just say, just say, it's these worth two. A shot. It's so it's bad their relationship. One of them has to itch your ear with a finger, and the other one wipes his ass on the bed sheets. Yeah, these people need help more than any. Yeah, these yeah, people yeah. need. The right, you do your plug. Um, and also, I'm on tour. I've done one tour day already in Bath at the Rondo Theatre, yeah. which was very nice. And now I'm not back till September, but buy tickets. Tickets are starting to shift, baby. Yeah. And I have been uh, flyer in this podcast. Um, come and see me on tour. I promise you, it's going to be a fantastic show. Um, Lovely. And uh, yeah, we're going to go. Um, have a wonderful week. Thank how you so get, much for listening. How can they get in touch with if us? If you would like to get in touch, please do write to us at bwtbpod at gmail.com. Can I say as well to Saz and Steve Green, thank you so much for writing. Yeah. They're writing every week. They said uh, they've got I mean, they've, they've lots of stuff. They said, Jemmy, have you had your date pierced yet? No, I'm going to go at the start of the summer holidays. What does that do again, the piercing? It's hopefully to help headaches. But I will report back, Saz, don't you worry. She's having it done. Yeah. And she says she's with you on putting she doesn't put steve stuff away last week i know i read that bit and i was like yes so she doesn't put steve's clothes away she said what she does she sorts it into piles yeah but then what she does she puts it on his side of the bed yeah so he physically has to deal with it your chair's a nightmare but all that would happen there steve is i would literally take one arm push the stuff onto the floor and then yeah. get into bed. Right, so, quick, because I need the toilet. She needs the toilet. Um, get in touch with us, bwtbpod at yeah. gmail.com. I've done that bit. Follow us on the socials. Yeah. You've done that bit. No, I haven't done that bit. At bwtb. At bwtb. Have a wonderful week. Pod. pod. At bwtbpod. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what a shit show of a car All right, we love you all. We love you all. Thanks you for listening. I love you, Gemma. I love you. Bye. Bye, have a great day. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot. Bye. I, sh- I missed an opportunity to do an Alan Partridge reference there. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Love you, <laughs> in a way. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Tune
tune in it's Sunday morning.